Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Marvel Cinematic University podcast. I am your host, temporarily, Jay Christie. AC is on his way, but uh, we got a big panel. We got a lot of stuff to get to, so we're going to start without him. Um, you know, we got, like I said, a great panel, but before I get to any of that, make sure you're review subscribing to the show, following us on platforms, and most importantly, joining our Patreon, patreon.com slash mcuniversitypod. $3, you get all our content. We just did a great mailbag. We just had the fate of the furious where i kind of you know share some of my thoughts about how the rock stopped playing a character and start playing himself in the fast and furious franchise mm -hmm. and yeah you know good stuff like that but we got a great panel like i said so let's introduce them they're all friends of the show all people who if you've listened you know them we got from the black eye who tips podcast the you know one of the biggest charlotte hornets fans around rod morrow rod how you doing hey thanks for having me man glad to be back Oh, absolutely happy to have you. Uh, we got Dalbino Sorio coming in with the WandaVision t-shirt. Dalbin, how you doing? And just for the record, this is my 21st appearance on the pod. 21! <laughs> All right, so happy to be back with you guys. Happy to be back with Maze. I, I have a feeling we're going to go off the rails here. And Rod, I know Rod's going to bring it. You know, a huge fan of his stuff, so I'm excited. Yes, and we have, like you mentioned, we have Anthony Maze, who's been on most of the Loki episodes. He's our guy we go to. He's got a lot of takes on Loki. Maze, how you doing? I like how Dalbin is pegging me as the troublemaker here. I mean, we got through the Rufy episode, Dalbin. I don't think there's really too much, you know, more wild shit we can get into. Everything we talked about in episode one paid off, so. Yes, this episode is wild, but it's not wild in the ways that I think are conducive to us going off the rails. Exactly. But this is episode five of season two of Loki, science slash fiction. Um there was obviously a lot of speculation about what this was going to be because of the cliffhanger that happened at the end of last episode. Um, now, I just carry out of curiosity uh, because Rod and Albin, you guys weren't on last week. When you saw the ending of episode four, I'll start with Rod. How did you think it was going to like, what was your speculation of what that blast was going to do to our characters? Man, um, <clears throat> I didn't, I, I really thought maybe uh, they'd be finding themselves back in that like, uh season one episode five world where they met like the other Lokis and all that stuff I was like are we maybe this is their way to get them back in because everyone loved those characters um so I was like oh wait we'll be revisiting that possibly but no they took it a different direction and Delbin um Groundhog Day I, you know, I, I, you guys asked it on your, on your, uh, on Twitter and I, I used the Bill Murray gif, right? Like, haven't we done this? Or I thought it was that. I thought for sure that's the way we were going to go. Um, sometimes it's nice to be right, but sometimes it's nice to be surprised on that, on that journey. Yeah. And so what we ended up getting was, I think, I think it was like so close to what I had predicted. Although I don't think this is crazy. I think this was like a pretty standard prediction of like that people would go back to time, the timelines. Um, because I felt like that was kind of, like, just structurally, they always say that, like, right before the end, you want to have the all is lost moment, and what would feel more all is lost than all the characters getting separated. Um, and so, I think the thing that's interesting that I want to start off talking about is um, the characters go to their original timelines, except for Loki. And so we start with him in the TVA, time slipping, and I find that fascinating that he doesn't have a timeline to go back to so just before we even get to the other timelines maze how did you feel like were you kind of disappointed when it might have seemed like it was just that he was time slipping again well i was trying to remember was it ac that said he thought the time slipping would come back last week yes yes he did so he nailed that one he's not here to bathe in his own prediction <laughs> i mean so sure for the he'll, people who I'm remember sure he'll the come in hot and just be like for wow, the people so who right. remember the speech he wrote for the white vision prediction this is all for the good <laughs> <laughs> The speech, Jesus Christ! I, I I implore speech. people to go back to I think episode eight of Wandavision. He had pre-written something. That's wow. beautiful. Yeah, it was probably a poem. That's what he does. But man, I mean, I'm not I'm not like mad about it, but I'm disappointed. It was it did not go beyond expectations at all. It essentially set us up for episode six to redo it right that's all this episode was i thought i thought once again the best scene of the episode was sylvie and loki this time at a bar 
Although, where did the shot go? That's the that's my what's up with the hot cocoa machine sticking point of this episode. I guess it just disappeared. Wait, but... didn't it get like spaghettified though? Probably, that the idea? probably, but maybe maybe something more mischievous is afoot, Jake. You never know. You never know. Maybe that's maybe that's what Victor Timely's up to. Is he stealing shots? That's why I didn't want hot cocoa. He wants to get to the bourbon. <laughs> but when you end the episode with essentially the Big Bang in episode four. And as we talked about last week, anything is possible, right? How big are they going to make this? Is this going to be MCU wide impact? Is this going to be a turning point? Is this going to be their outlet to get rid of Jonathan Majors? No, no, we're just going to, you know, get to see mobius sell jet skis that's really like the biggest payoff that we got and so i thought it massively under delivered in that respect and i thought it was a fine episode but when they had a chance to do something potentially really groundbreaking and different they just did more of the same so i will say and i don't know how other people on this podcast feel i completely disagree with you about my feeling i really enjoyed it a lot i think mostly because I don't know. I and I'm not trying to say I'm not even trying to say like I had low expectations, but like I was thinking about the like I was I was never expecting a break, groundbreaking sci-fi type thing to happen with the, the the like I just I I mean I guess there could have been, but like I was kind of I am glad that we get to see these characters on the timelines they come from because that feels like a thing that was has been promised since like season since we learned that they were originally stolen from the timelines. Like I will say, this, if we ended season two and we still had never seen any of the characters in the TVA in the original timelines, I'd be disappointed because like when you have the scene with Ravona as a teacher in like season, episode five of season two, uh, one, you have to pay that off at some point, and so I'm glad we did. But I felt like I really enjoyed the character moments of it. And Dobby, I know you're a big fan of the episode. And so you don't need to rebut Maze's point because we're not that type of show. But what did you, what was the thing you took out of it that made you feel uh, that it was very strong? Never rebut Maze. Maze is my partner in trouble. So when, when we start getting into the recasting stuff, I know we're going to go down some real like, crazy shit. You're so, not ready. So. You're not ready for my recasting, Dobby. <laughs> I'm just going to warn you right now. You're not ready for it. So, uh, so I, I think, so I think the things that stood out to me were, um, I, I agree with you. I think you have to pay off the, where they're from, cause it has to, what, what comes next or what I think comes next has to be earned. Um, and I, and we've talked about this before, like this notion of stakes, right? Like stakes for the sake of them having stakes. I'm not really a fan of, but actual legitimate stakes, like B-15 was a pediatrician during 2012 probably helping people after the the war with the Avengers and Shatari. Like that's, that's kind of a big deal to me. Right. Uh, OB being a PhD, like there's, there's a lot of really good there. Um, and I do think that, I think that what you, what you alluded to Maze about like, Oh, they had a chance to like really just re, re or shut everything down and like really just set the table for what comes next. I think that's, what's going to happen in episode six. I think that somebody had said this on Twitter and I thought, and, and we'll get to the variety stuff later, but um, the no, we've been in a they've been the, the writers and the actors have all been in a strike. So even if Marvel wanted to recast them, they really couldn't do it um, right now, right? Because they don't have anybody to write whatever the heck is going to come next. Um, and so, but I think where we end up at the end of episode six, I think is going to make this episode make more sense. Um, but I thought I thought it was. I mean, the character moments mattered. I, I, the the line where Loki finally says, "I want my friends back," like that, and Victor saying, "Time to be brave." I think those are two lines that I'm going to remember. Like yo, th- like that's some good writing. You know, and some good character moments. Um, but I, I thought it was a really good episode. But it felt what I will say, it did feel like the calm before the storm. It didn't feel like it felt like a penultimate episode. It felt like, all right, we're gonna set the table now because this is what's gonna come next. Yeah, I mean, what it felt most like to me, and I hope, and I, I'm almost positive it'll be better. It felt like the episode before the battle with the uh, what's it called the Frost King, whatever in Game of Thrones, the White. How am I, the White Walkers, that bad, you know, that episode where uh, Brienne gets knighted. Let's hope that episode six is not as bad as the episode after that. But, um, Rod, how did you feel about, you know, getting to see everyone, getting to, and I think that, you know, the character moments that we're talking about, basically, whatever you want to touch on, uh, I'm sorry I put you third. Nah, it's all good. Um, Yeah, I like the character moments. I did kind of want to see what everybody was, especially since they made such a big deal of making that question since episode 
three of this season. Everything's been like, well, what do you even want to know what you were back then and all that? So, you know, I do. And I thought because of how many of them it was, it was brief enough for each character to show like, like we didn't spend, we didn't overspend too much time there. I felt like, okay, we did all of them in however many minutes this episode was. Um, and the episode kind of sped by for me. Um, and then visually, I loved a lot of stuff with the episode and the special effects uh, the, the and the shots, the directorial choices of like some of these shots were just so, so cool, man. This was, um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. But also knowing it's a penultimate episode, I, I, don't, I wasn't looking for um, like the major twist to be what happens in this episode. I'll, I'll probably be looking at episode six to see if they if they're gonna as may has alluded to end with some type of like world bending like this is altering the mcu yeah. yeah i think that they're going to based on a quote that was off retweeted from the variety piece but we'll get to that mm-hmm. um but i and i think the thing for me that was rewarding is the way that we saw all the different people i mean specifically the four um and how like the ways they're similar and the ways they're different. I really did appreciate that um, Casey was escaping from prison because that felt like something that could be for Casey or Pillboy. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Eugene Cordero mm-hmm. both, in both universes. Yeah, um, that's Pillboy's grandfather who got imprisoned at Alcatraz, actually. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Um, so, but I think that, like, the, the actual... The, the, the thing that I, I'm glad that they paid off was because this is thing that I think I actually haven't really even be, seen discussed on Twitter, although I'm purposely not plugged in to MC Twitter, is that I, I think that when they had the time slipping bit at the beginning of the season, I was wondering like, okay, this is obviously a bad thing, but in some ways, could this not be advantageous? And so I, I did like the idea that they introduced the concept of time slipping being a power in a way. You know, mm-hmm. it felt reminiscent of you know, Multiverse of Madness, where it was revealed that America Chavez was at, could control the, you know, universes that she punched into. And so I like that they set that up. I thought that, um, I really, I really enjoyed Key this episode. I thought that he was amazing, uh, dude. He's yes. like so in the pocket with everything. Um, and like, I think that his, there, there was a moment in the scene with him where they're standing when he first uses the temp pad where it's him, uh, Owen Wilson, and Tom Hiddleston all staying next to each other, and he's so small. And, like, that, I think, is such a, like... That's what casting is, I think. The, I was heard someone once say that ca- directing is 70% casting, and I think that that's so much of it that, um, you know, it, I felt like that was great. But the thing... But I, I want to get your guys' opinion on this immediately, is what is your take on the fact that... Uh, I actually don't remember Obi's human names character, but that he... AD something? Eddie, yeah, Eddie... That he... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Eddie's like Wong PhD or something. That his workshop <laughs> is very, very similar looking to his workshop in the TVA. What did you guys th- think about that? Because that was the thing that I kept noticing every second it was on screen. Mm-hmm. Whoever wants to go first. Uh, well, I'll just say well, I don't know. This, 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 this is what happens. This is why, this this is why AC is delegate. the host. I eventually, we used to switch off who hosted every episode, and then we decided that AC should do it. Uh, Maze, you go first. All right. I loved his workshop. I thought, you know, we've talked extensively production design off the chart. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite things in this episode by far was just the entire look of it. It looked like kind of like an airplane hanger. Mm -hmm. Then it's got the sloped bookshelves. Um, I didn't so much make the connection that you did that it looks like his other workshop, Mm -hmm. but in just in terms of clutter and like, you know, the way that he's so scatterbrained, I thought I thought that his character on the timeline was obviously the most connected to his character in the TVA. And I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, th- this whole episode made me think like, man, they watched everything everywhere all at once and they cast him for this episode. Like more, more and he's been great the whole time. Don't get me wrong. He's been awesome. But like somehow this felt like he stepped through the multiverse from everything everywhere all at once into this role here. And it was really cool mm-hmm. to see. Dalbin, you're up. Yeah, but I just want to confirm. I looked it up. It does look that it was intentional and it looks like they actually just used a lot of the same set, which is always cool. Uh, it's also a good well, way to save money. Lazy, Jake. Damn. Well, no, it's not that it's late. I mean, that's <laughs> we'll call the motif. 
Uh, Dobby and you go. What, what, what was your take? We already kind of answered the thing about the set, but what was your take on okay. his character, who I felt was like, in terms of, because the other three kind of played the same general note of what the hell is going on, and Kate, he was the, AD was the one who was like, into it. And I think, I think that's intentional, man, because he's the one, he's the only other person in the TVA who hasn't had their mind wiped. You know, like, the, that, that I think is becoming clearer and clearer. Like, he's the only one that, that, Either, either he's Victor. Ty- he's either he who remains his partner in building the TVA or whatever his role ends up being. Um, I love the fact that he uh, he was a best selling author and would go to the library and like and like try to buy whoa, his whoa. own book. He was not a best selling author. He <laughs> well, was an author. He was an author. Well, but I love his pun when 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 Loki's like, "Oh, there's a TVA handbook on every desk," and he's like, "Oh, so I do become a best selling author." Yeah. I thought that was amazing. Oh, great stuff. Uh, yeah, also I thought him great... saying like, "If I can find you a copy," and then yes. like, oh, have, here's one right here. <laughs> here's, oh, you're a lucky man. But actually, Maze, no, and and I love that you bring that up because this is so one of the things that Victor Timely had. Remember Victor Timely? He goes, "I'm the I'm from uh, Scamersville or whatever." He's describing Chicago as like the capital of scams. Uh, Ob has a little bit of scamming in him. Talk about like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to find you a book. Let's see if I can find one. And he's th- a so, criminal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Mobius is a shady jet ski salesman. I mean, it's you know only I mean? hundred B15 yeah. is above the board, you know. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So, but I, but I loved Ob. I, and then with the design, which to answer your question, Jake, I think I think there's a legitimate reason for that thing because he remembers the TVA. He he knows that that was his life. Um, what I think it raises, in, I think what it brings. For me, is just there's a reason why that OB was plucked from that timeline to become the variant in the, in the TVA when the TVA was constructed, um, yeah. and that just I think confirms for me how, the importance of his character to the larger mystery of the TVA. I loved it. I thought he did great. It was he was my favorite part of the of the yeah. episode actually. Rod, uh, you're up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, this is like when a team everyone has like three or four assists. There's no point. Right? Um, for me, I, uh, the main thing I appreciated, uh, you know, the things y'all said, obviously, you know, totally legit. But the main thing I appreciated about Ob in this episode, um, and I, I got it wrong. It's like, it's like eighty Doug uh, was his name. Eighty Doug. Yeah, Kinsley. it's eighty. Eighty. Um, yeah. But the thing that I liked about him was that even though he was no longer like the scientist uh, person that we met in the TVA, he approached the same concept from a writer's point of view mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. was low-key kind of <laughs> no pun but he was kind of like the um crux of the episode the realization that loki comes through to control his his powers at the end is one of of more about fiction it's more about character driven and stuff like that is how he found like oh this is how you control this power and i just thought that was cool because typically i think we go into these shows even though it's theoretical science and it's all made up quote unquote we kind of look for like these scientific, like explain to me this, explain multiverse. How does a multiverse work for you differently than others? And to have him come at it like, but what if it's more poetic? What if it's more narrative? And I was just like, fuck, man, that's mm-hmm. such a, whoever thought of that, that was just so smart. What it reminded me of, and I got the exact quote off. This is not something I can wrap off my head, but there's a great quote from Arthur C. Clarke where he said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So the idea of, like, how does the TV work? Like, it's not magic, but it might as well be. And so so this AD, who's a guy living in Pasadena in the 90s, to him, it is no different than just thinking about imagining a story because he can't conceive of the way it works. There'll be no reason to. Yeah, he's um, like, what if it's not the science? Like, what if it's the fiction? And I'm like, that is a bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was well, a really a- good line. It's a call back to Thor in Thor 1 when he's talking to Jane and he's telling Jane, like, magic is just science that you use to understand it, you know? Like, it's just like, yes, like, let's just, let's go along for this ride, man. Let's do that. (laughs) Um, And so I think I had said before that I would be displeased if Loki, the show ended and we never saw Mobius on a jet ski. And so I... I'm a, this is like I'm I wish he was on the water. Like I'm not gonna lie. It was it was like a fucking dry hump of a jet ski yeah. experience, bro. I also I will just say, and I try not to punch up things because, yeah. you know, these are professional writers. 
But when he was trying to sell the Jets against someone, I just wish, and I think maybe they didn't want to make this joke because the Marvels still have a good relationship with the Russos and they don't want to insult Cleveland. But the person really should have said, why the fuck am I riding a jet ski on Lake Erie? Like, like that should have been the line. That was just so dumb. They sell, like, when they revealed that he sells jet skis in Cleveland, that to me was a very funny, unspoken joke. That yeah. like, no, it's not, he doesn't sell jet skis in Fort Lauderdale. He sells jet skis in on the mistake and, and by I the lake. Say, I uh, enjoyed the fake out. Cause, cause the way they yes. filmed the it shot, like it was such mm-hmm. a like they knew they were teasing us. It wasn't an accidental tease. Oh, they were yeah. like, "Oh, guys, we're not gonna show you what you want to see." But it, man, they got me. Like I was like, "Oh, so that oh wait." <laughs> but the thing I really enjoyed about the scene of him at the sports, you know, comp the place that sells sports equipment, which one I didn't know you can get financing on a jet ski. That feels like something that a lot of people who have declared bankruptcy at some point in their life have done. But, how about how, how about Moby is still trying to get old, still trying to get B15 to finance the jet ski in, yeah, in I know another time. at the end of the yeah. universe. Um, <laughs> yep, yeah. But the thing I thought was really poignant is that like I like that cuz I like the idea that these people have traits that they can't shake and that Mobius still in this reality got a lot of pleasure and meaning from his work. Like, he didn't seem, like, jaded to be selling jet skis. He seemed like he kind of was like, oh, yeah. Like, the fact that he's a major making a face, but I think the fact that he is selling and trying to sell a jet ski to 100B15 means that he is, on some level, he can't help himself. He's like, yeah, you know, it's just... It's gen- but what's your response to my point? That just feels generous. I don't know. I don't... I'd like... It's... I go back to him wondering mobius wondering or i guess mm-hmm. i guess other people wondering on behalf of him what his life was like and him being mm-hmm. you know he, he'd rather be ignorant because it might be good i this is not this does not seem like a good life I'm see sorry. i agree with you and divorced I, wait is it divorced or is he think, a widower well, we don't he's a widower know just based on the tone with which we don't the know. tone with which he spoke, also, I guessed. um i believe that time period he was in wouldn't that have been the snap area so like did his wife get dusted? well? No, it's a, we don't we don't know when this we don't know when this universe. Oh, changed, true, because it's a branch time on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the step, yeah. But the thing I will say is, I agree with you, Maze. That it is not objectively a great life. But I think a thing about it is that like he has two children, he has like a sure. larger purpose, and so I think that if you were to present you present Frank in this reality with the idea of being Mobius, he doesn't want to because to him, any life without his kids is not a good life. So, like, I think, like, it doesn't have to be objectively good. It is just, is different, you know, that it, it is, he has a, a, that the purpose with which he puts the TVA in the Mobius reality is, of course, filled up from, in this reality, with, you know, his job and most importantly, his kids. And so, I think that it, I don't, I, I actually would have been a little disappointed if his life was, like, really, really good. But For his sure. life is good. His, but Frank's life is good to Frank, is the thing. Well, I, I guess what I'm pushing back on from what you said is that, he loves his job. I did not necessarily get that. I don't. 100%. Yeah. I didn't I think he loved like his job. Yo, sorry. He, he loves his kids and he's <laughs> trying to provide for his kids. And he does like jet skis because yes. he does have two in the garage. So clearly, you know, at some point he does get after it yeah. on Lake Erie or whatever the fuck sad yeah. body of water is closest. But it felt like it felt like a scammer. It felt like a used car salesman. It didn't feel like that's true. a positive vibe career. No, I guess what I would say is I think that the thing that I, I, I think was maintained was even though he was kind of being a salesman, a scammer, there was just, I think, an un a sincerity and like an un, not the inability to be ironic. That is just you can't beat out of Owen Wilson, which I think was. And yes, that's that's it. It's. It's the Owen Wilson effect. That's yes, which is. is why you cast him. Uh, but um, Gabin, what was your, what was the detail you picked up in the Mobius bit? Because that's probably the reality we spent the most time with. So I mean, the <laughs> the kids, the kids is the is the is the biggest thing. I it, I think that's that's the value in his life. Like he even when he says he's I want to get back to my kids. Like when they're all kind of trying to figure out what they want to get back to and all that. Um, Ob seems like to be the only one that's like, nah, I'm all in with you, Loki. Let's figure this out. Our our man who escaped from Alcatraz is just trying to get to another point in the time where he could be free. Like that's all he's trying to get to, right? But Mobius is like, man, I got to get back to my kids, and I think that there is some there is something poignant about that because like we we've been led to believe through eleven episodes that the Lokis have had stuff stolen from them, right? Like, oh, you're in this timeline, something's about to happen, you get plucked, right? 
Here now we now we know that all of them have gotten plucked from something, right? Mobius was about to make a killer sale for two jet skis, probably, or two, what is it, water devices or whatever the hell he calls it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the bigger part is he gets taken away from his kids, right? And he's like, I want to get back to my kids. And I th- and the point of the point that Rod makes about the, the the blip and the snap, it is interesting because again, this is a branch timeline, but it is 2022, so it is after the 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 blip. So. Are we to believe that Thanos' snap had not, did nothing to any other universes? Because we did have it confirmed because of the book that Marvel released that this takes place before, you know, all of that, right? And this is a 2012 Loki, and you got to talk about all that. But I, I think I think Mobius wanting to get back to his kids, I, I felt that, man. I, but also, I'm a dad. So, like, I get that. I'm like, damn, I'd, I'd like to get back yeah. to my little one, too, you know? Yeah, I think, for me, I felt that when, like, Mobius was making the speech about we didn't want to be good or bad. For me, at least, I think maybe this is just the things I value, but I felt like he doesn't want there to be a person he's giving up more than anything. Like, I don't, he never, like, for example, when we had, you know, Brad being a movie star, it never felt like he would have traded being at the TVA to be a movie star, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, Rod, is there anything fun that you picked up on in the, you know, I'm, uh, I'm very curious where they filmed this. I think they filmed all of this in, uh, England. So I'm curious what part of England has like colonial uh, homes like this. Uh, yeah, there was a couple of things. Um, one, um, I did, I didn't think they would do like a big thing for Mobius just because of what they did for Brad. I thought they wouldn't want to do like, and he also got a dope life. I thought it was going to be the opposite where it was going to be a fucking really sad life where I'd be like, Jesus. But it was just kind of like middle of the road, like, you know, like take it or leave it. No offense. You know, I don't know his kids, but we didn't see him. Uh, you know, we didn't spend a lot of time with him, you know. Uh, fuck them kids, as MJ would say. Um, and then the other part was uh, it's just such a little detail, but um, one of the windows from his kid's bedroom had a fucking like rope made out of bed sheet that they could sneak out. <laughs> and because he didn't take the call during when he got called by both of his sons it, i was like oh is he like one of those dads where he's like n- he's working so hard he's not really present in these kids yeah. lives and and it's and like that's his the subtext of this to this scene you know and i don't know if we'll get any more of it but i i was interested in like what does his life look like well yeah there's Jack also Pearson. The the kid has matches or a lighter or whatever. Like yeah, yeah. like it's, he it's, like he sounded like his kids sure. was bad. He sounded like his kids yeah. was bad. So I I will I did want to like see him. You know what I mean? To be like, man, what's he cool? Yeah. But um, uh, you know, I'm sure they didn't have time for all that shit. But I that's those were the little yeah. details I picked up on. Yeah, I I think that it's it's a I think it's like a perfectly middle of the road reality, yeah. and I you know I think I just I think Owen Wilson is just so good at the. Like, he doesn't need to work hard at all to sell anything he talks about with his kids. Like, you just believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought I thought it was really good. I feel like Hunter B-15's reality was the one that I felt like we got the least of. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't... Wow, you know, wait, I'm, Nick, are you saying they aren't developing Hunter B-15 as a character? Even in no. an episode where she's in her real life? <laughs> yeah, it feels like... It feels like to me that Hunter B-15, like, they kind of were like, we should have X amount of main characters... And they're like, well, we don't really have enough time to develop all of them. Yeah, but she'll still like. I feel really bad for Wumi Masako, but it's like a crime. The thing about it is, and maybe I'm wrong about this. And I once again, I don't want to speak ill of anything. She's just doing good work. They haven't really developed her. And to be completely frank, I don't actually need her to be around for a lot of this. Like her character is, has never felt super essential because she was she she didn't become like a major part of the crew until late in season one. And so, like, once again, I'm fine with her being around if she's going to be around. But, like, if they're not going to have enough time to give her a full backstory and arc, it's like, well, is she here just to be another body in the scene? I mean, is it is it totally transparent of Disney to flank Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston with a, a bevy of, you know, minority characters? Like, yeah. p- even Pillboy? Even our boy Casey, like, you know, representing. Yeah, so I have, like, like a it's... bit of a different take on this. And it's it's that I, ultimately the story is going to end up being about, you know, Loki. That, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't like Echo or something like that where, you know, because they, they do a lot of properties and Miss Marvel's come from the studio, you know, uh, credit, uh, She-Hulk has come from the studio. This is going to ultimately be a story where the main character's a white dude. Um, 
And when it comes down to that, I like to see them diversify the supporting cast. But what happens is a lot of times we end up becoming like, well, now I want to see this person kind of be more of a main character rather than a supporting cast. Whereas if it was a white lady or whatever, or a white dude, we'd be like, yeah, who gives a fuck if, if that person gets more lines. So I think they're just dealing with the double expectations of of both. Yeah. I'll add to um, that. I'll I'll add to that too. I think it's interesting because if you had to, if you had to rank like the the characters, I think you'd go Loki, white man, British man. You know, who's mm-hmm. they, the Brits are stealing all all our roles anyway. Right? <laughs> I, I mean, know. he's British already, though. So like, <laughs> yeah, we explore we explore so, a lot so, of so, things, but you know, Loki came over as British, like from from day he one, he sounded like British. that. <laughs> right. So you so, so you have you have you know him. And then you have then I mean you have Gugu, who's again she wasn't in this episode, but she, right. she definitely has top billing. You know the abuser, Kang the abuser. He's he's got top billing in this story too, right? right? Uh, so that's the, and then Ob, an Asian dude, right? right? And then Sylvie, and then Sylvie, a white woman, right? So like, right. I, I it is Loki because I agree with Rod. I think Marvel has done a really good job in terms of just like organically diversifying stuff. Like not like their characters are just diverse. Ironheart's a black chick, right? right. Black Panthers, Black Panthers. It's in the name. Um, with with Loki, I think if you had to rank them, it'd be a pretty diverse cast anyway. But somebody, the thing is, in in series like this, particularly when you get to, people get cut, man. Like people just don't, you just don't have enough enough runway to give her yeah. as much as, as you can. But I'm not thinking that there's some rich backstory that just uh, yeah, didn't make right, it right, right, right. Yes, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah, with that. Know, I, I feel agree. that way. And, I feel yeah. that way about several of the characters, though. Like. Yes. <laughs> like, like yes. Stacey yeah. feels like that to me, yeah. you know, but I don't think they, exactly. I don't think that's the purpose of the series. So like, I don't right. like in the Marvel scope of everything they're trying to do, it just doesn't feel like they're like, and we really want to get. Rod, I just want to hang out with my friends. You right. know, right. These are I, my well, friends. I was going to get to that later in the episode, but yeah, like <laughs> um, that, like uh, and, not to skip ahead, Jake, but that idea no, didn't really land hard with me because I, I don't feel like they all became like friends and family over the right, course of this because right. I don't think that's what right. the show could could I don't think it's capable for a show in this format with this amount of runtime to build these characters out this way and try to carry all this multiversal plot shit. Yeah. I think yeah. what's happening is we and I'm not not I'm going to be a, I'll go back to my hobby horse again but we are accustomed to TV shows having six or seven characters that have rich stories about them. The problem is we're accustomed to this because TV used to be 22 fucking episodes. That's why. <laughs> yes, right. yes. And so exactly I, feel, right? I think, in my opinion, I think some people will be like, well, then you're just going to make a show that's about one character. And to people who say that, they're dumb. TV shows will be 22 episodes again. Yes. <laughs> that, that's actually the answer. Or at least 16. Well, but, and well, I, I mean, think about it, Jake. Well, I'm good. Yeah. Go I was going to say, and then there's inherently things from the 22 episodes that we used to complain about too. So like, yeah, it, of th- course. there's going to be people that would have bitched. I remember, you know, Ages of Shield people, this is too slow. What the fuck? I don't care yeah. about these people who don't even matter in this universe. Like, I don't you? want the Hunter B-15 bottle episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, even with like Daredevil and that stuff being like 13 episodes, yeah. people were like, I, this yeah. is a street level yeah. crime. They don't even fight for the Avengers. Who cares? So like, <laughs> They were going to catch a stray no matter which way. You have to make choices when you're writing. And and so the strays they're going to catch from this is I would like a world where I got to know some of these characters a bit more in depth, but this is the choice that was made. Yeah. So, you know, that yeah. I, I, when, when you hit the line about these are my friends, it just don't hit the way that it would have hit yeah. if this was like episode 21 of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. season one where you're like, fuck, these are your friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So I'll yeah. say I think so I'll say that I think the reason it hit for the reason that that line in particular landed for me is because we've been with this Loki now for what feels like mm. a t- so like on uh, for him I feel right, that pain because right. remember like yeah. this is the Loki that got taken out of 2012 right like you know all this yeah. so like for him I and also I think this is this is where the the Marvel not doing serialized TV how you normally do serialized TV kind of comes in because we are we're left to treat season 2 as kind of like a standalone thing when as it when realistically it's a, it's the 11th episode of a series and 11 episodes in 11 
11 40 minute episodes in you'd have some buy-in with some characters i just started the rookie and nathan right. Fillin is sleepwalking through all of that but i care about some of his some of his partners because i'm up to season two already right and like i've bought into some of this and with with Loki, because they've treated it as like two separate volumes, it doesn't feel like the 11th episode 40 minutes in. The right. only one we really do have buy-in with is Loki because we we know his story. Right. Yeah, that's I agree a great, with that. That's a great and he, point. And, and he yeah. sold it. And Tom he Hiddleston sold it. Sold he sold it. it. Right. Yeah, like, right. I believe that he thinks he's yeah, right. going to hang out with I, his friends. Right. Can I share They're, my I don't read think on they're this. really his friends. Right. <laughs> I, I, let me, let me share you. my read on this. Because I talked, we talked about this in the Discord last night. Just to skip ahead to it, I agree that like with the traditional definition of hanging out with the being with friends, I think is fair. But the thing, the reason why I bought it, and I think that he couldn't put it in this language himself, is that, the, that these people are special to him, even if he hasn't spent the requisite amount of time to consider them "quote unquote" his friends. Because if you think about how Loki's life has been up to then. He has been the villain or the nuisance or the problem to every single person in his life. And these are the first people who have ever, ever, except for his mom, ever, 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 ever treated him with kindness, treated him as an equal, treated him with respect, cared about him. And so to him, like, I I do believe that once again, if it is, even if it's not the actual definition of the word friends, I believe that being with these people, the experience of this is the most important thing to him because every other experience of his life is about him feeling little or small or not accepted. I agree. I'm with you. Can you imagine how emotional he would get if he sat down at Central Park and got a cappuccino? He'd fucking explode <laughs> I mean, with happiness wanted... and joy and love. Yes. Uh, I wanted Next. to bring this up when AC was here because he's such a fan of the movie, but he's still running late. Um, I got text. He'll be here in a bit. But uh, what it really reminded me a lot of is the great moment in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 in which uh, – Simon Pegg's character Benji is defusing the bomb and he's asked what's most important to him and he like chokes out like my friends like kind mm-hmm. of embarrassedly and I think that there is a way that I, I'm i a sucker a hundred times out of a hundred for uh, the friends we've made all along the way storyline because yeah. I think not to be corny that is kind of the thing that like remember the best times in your life do you remember like the literal things you did no you remember the people you're around that's just right. kind of the human experience oh. uh, and so and so uh oh. Yes, but anyway, I think that there's a way that it is hard to admit that. And so I thought that that's why Hiddleston's acting pulled through the fact that if you learn like these are not his best friends. But I think I think think we're all agreeing there that it worked, especially for Loki as a character and Hiddleston delivered the line. It's just more of a like, and I think, um, is it Devine? I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. Dalvin. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, I I think that um, you nailed it in that um he killed the line he it works for him but with this being two six episode series and there being a break between them right. in my mind the momentum because because if I'm, now that I'm, you have me thinking about it the momentum of like from episode one to episode 11 where these characters came from the things they went through to get back here Sure, emotionally there should be like some momentum in my brain to be like, oh yeah, of course they they, they are his friends now. But but with it being the format that it is, that break made me feel like this is almost like starting over, and I'm and I'm not able to emotionally resonate with the complete loop of the story. But maybe when I when this thing is all done and I go back and rewatch the whole thing, it'll it'll feel even better. Yep. Yep. Yes. Um. And so let's talk about Sylvie's world. She goes back to her. McDonald's life in Oklahoma. Needed a McChicken. Needed a McChicken. Yeah, Maze, I'll just let you start because you know what you, are we doing? Someone that's on deep side. Yeah. What are we doing, man? What the hell? We're doing it again. We're going back to McDonald's. Like, I, I mean, you want to talk about repurposing sets? They didn't even repurpose it. They just used it again. Where, yeah. where should Sylvie go? Ah, uh, she's got a temp pad. She'd go anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, she's got the he who remains special temp pad. And she's got her memories. Like, it's not like she got wiped or anything yeah. like everybody else. No, nope, let's have her go back to McDonald's. That makes sense. Let's do it. I think that this is a – I think that there's kind of a, um, a reticence that some people have to making characters just kind of say what they feel in, if, if they're not going to give them – a ton, a ton of screen time. And I think that, like, I can put the words into Sylvie's mouth that she likes living here because it is the antithesis of what she grew up with that is, like, so calm and so that she can have the routine. She doesn't have to do this out of the other. 
But I think if we're not going to have her show that, if we're not going to have an episode where, like, we see her meet all of her friends and we see her day-to-day life, she needs to say that in some way. She needs to explain to Loki in some way why she keeps coming back to Oklahoma in 1982. I just, I, it, I'm, there are explanations I'm willing to buy, but I agree with you where it's like, she, we're just, we're just supposed to accept that she loves this place. And the record scene, the record store scene was yes. great. Yes, yes exactly. Have her working at the record store. How fucking as hard the is bar, this? As was I mean, the, the record store is not going to pay $20 million, though. <laughs> but as was the All bar right, scene, too. Is. Like, the bar scene was also mm-hmm. in her universe, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, yep. um, yep. I, I do want to say, like, I think a really quick fix to it could have been, um, and it wouldn't have taken that long of screen time, but everyone else went back to w- their place that they were taken from. And I, whether she used a temp pad to get back to that McDonald's, because we know that's not her universe of origin where she would have been working at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Just a quick moment of her going back to the world she was no longer part of. Choosing it. And then choosing to go to McDonald's, I think just kind of like fixes all that. Um, but once yeah. again, she gives me the, the same feeling of Karen, Kevin Spacey in American Beauty. This whole thing <laughs> has been about stakes, the end of the world, saving the multiverse, blah, blah, blah. And her whole fucking yeah. arc has been like, I would like to go to the place with the least amount of stakes that matters the least in the universe yeah. and everyone leave me the fuck alone. And that's been her whole note since like season one. So yeah. I like, it's weird to say, I could see the character. This is their dream, but also at the same time, it's kind of like a, like it's such a, it feels like a wasted dream because of the potential of this character and how much stuff she can do. And she is a Loki. So it's almost like the the antithesis of what a Loki is. A Loki's always at the crux of everything, you know, scheming and plotting and doing stuff. And and to see her not do that, uh, at, like her final resting place to be like McDonald's is such a like ironic coincidence, I guess. Resting next to Bob Stoops, right? How the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, that no, was this is back, like, we like, heard the Oklahoma game. I think this is. <laughs> Let me see, she let me see who is Big Twelve football. That's what she wants to do. <laughs> I, like, that's the fuck she wants to do. She's I, think, a, I think it's funny. No, it's even worse. Work. It's even worse. This is this is the Barry Switzer era. It's even worse. Oh yeah, yeah. It's even yeah. worse. Yeah. It's even worse. He's hanging it's out with Barry Switzer. Worse. It's not it's good football. It's not good football, she's man. Just, she's just like a super <laughs> fan, guys. It's like guys. guys they this went is eight, they went four. Loki's like, why are you guys, here? She's like, this is when game. football was football, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys, 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 game. guys. Because they went eight and four in the big eight, and they were still running the wishbone. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. She's like, listen, Loki's explaining, like, why the TVA matters. She's like, listen, they run the wishbone, and they went eight and four. I need to see every snap. I'm sorry. Yeah. The universe well, let me, let me, We are see, growing. We are growing see, uh, here. <laughs> Okay, they won the Red River Rival Red River Rival. The Red River League. Shootout. The Red River and, Shootout. Yeah. Yes. And they also won at Bedlam. So she was happy, you know. She's yeah. like well, <laughs> Also also one thing that I know for sure is that at least at least we're talking fries cooked in beef fat. Yes. yes. In nineteen eighty two. So we got the, the OG mm. McDonald's fries. So yeah. is that yeah. like is that enough? And the and nuggets super... are the, the nuggets they got white meat, dark meat. And, yeah. other animal. and I'm super glad that, that her coworker didn't turn yeah, out to right. be Mobius because everyone kept speculating that, yeah. that that kid was gonna be Mobius. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't think I want that. And why would she yeah. choose the McDonald's so, he worked at? I'm good. Just to just to quickly say, the the way that Marvel fans like the amount of times Marvel has actually pulled something like that, I can count <laughs> on like one hand. They're right, like yeah. And this this is mass entertainment. They're not doing crazy twists like that. Characters in the background are not and not not just because Marvel's normal, but because right. that's actually bad storytelling too. Like if you right. don't give a lot of time, you can't just be like, and they were secretly the most important character. Speaking of important characters, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Wow. Man, wow. Anthony, Anthony Canton. Call it yes. time slipping, folks. Hey man, you <laughs> wanna buy a jet ski? <laughs> and above water, above watercraft. <laughs> AC, we were going through the ep- we got through most of the episode. Oh, yeah. Honestly, doing pretty well until we managed to have a tangent about the 1982 Oklahoma Sooner season. Um, Wait, what happened there? Well, because that's Sylvie... why Sylvie won. Yeah. No, no, no. It's I'm talking we're... about like what happened with the, the Sooners. I mean, nothing. The joke was just that oh. it was kind of an uneventful season. But she's like, she's trying to talk to Loki. He's like, no, you understand? They won the Red River Shootout this year. They got a good squad. <laughs> 
They go on eight and four. Um, I, got, anyway. I gotta be there. I gotta be there. <laughs> yeah. I gotta be there. I gotta be there. Um, so anyway, AC, I'm gonna toss it back to you. Um, but I'll, what I'll say is, we talked about basically every universe in depth, okay, except for Casey's, which we really don't need. I mean, he's escaping. Oh, oh I do. Can I? I do yes, want to. I do want to hit one thing on Casey. Of course. I was trying to figure out where the fuck he landed. It seemed like he took that shitty boat to Oakland, which is way farther. Like way farther, dog. Like he, you gotta go. It's a short little jaunt to San Francisco, where there is no beach like that side of the city there is no beach he went the other way he went the long way to oakland mm. for some reason back to uac okay. which makes so sense because they so never you, found so those guys uh in real life and maybe that's why they died or disappeared because it was yep. they went to oakland <laughs> yep. right exactly three yeah, white guys washing on wa- washing <laughs> oh. on shore in oakland in the 70s <laughs> not making it out my we, friend we, marvel I'm, solved the mystery <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Up next, DB Cooper. That's who got so, so AC, What's what up? are your general feelings about the way that it started? Basically, everything up until the very end, we've just we've covered everything oh, until okay. the scene where they're all in. I mean, yeah, it's you know we had a lot of time. No, I, um, no, I, I didn't mean it as a dig. I realized no, it's no, time no. to pass my It's 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 all it's all good, man. Um, no, why don't you I, just do everything we already did again? That sounds good. I, just, just like okay. the show, we're starting over. You know, it's not about when or where; it's about who, and we're all here, that, that's and we're right. your friends. That's right. That's, that's right. right. It's about the journey, Maze. It's about the journey. Is, <laughs> no, this makes me feel all warm journey. And fuzzy you know what I just realized of the podcast crew? Maze is Sylvie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I'm the hair is closest. Married to this McDonald's dog. That's just <laughs> where I am at. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I mean, I think the only thing, um, the only thing that I'll say, you know, re- in regards to everything leading up to what we get at the end is, um, I think from a narrative standpoint, the episode kind of really hits the notes for the the titular character loki in the sense that like from an emotional standpoint and an overall standpoint this is a person who you know is realizing his actual glorious purpose which you know takes me back all the way to episode one and that level of introspection which is really when the show gets to that that's when it's at its best and it got to that here and that's why I really enjoyed the episode. And um, I, just a quick note on on what we saw from OB. Uh, salute to a, a struggling writer out here trying to get books uh, sold. I appreciate I, pre- I appreciated that little touch there for him. And have you tried hey, that man. technique, AC? Hey, man. <laughs> no, I haven't. But also, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that was a thing you could do. <laughs> but, but like, also, yeah. How was that supposed to work in his head? Of putting his own book with a barcode that's not in the system, buying his own book and counting that towards his sales. There, there was big, big to bite us getting the Fuke name out at the water cooler energy from that scene. <laughs> hey, but at least Tobias could have a best selling book. He wrote The Man Inside Me. <laughs> hey, Obi had a best selling too. Every desk of the TVA has a TVA ad book. <laughs> this picture being in both of them at the end, oh man, it was cracking me up, dude. That, uh, oh. And then him pretending that the the, the, the book was like, oh, I'm probably trying to get you a copy. And we just see a stack of copies. Like, mm-hmm. God, he was killing me, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And and I also uh, salute to with the Mobius scene, um, them doing with the two, the two sons kind of playing off of Thor and Loki a bit with the way that they talked about him, one like in snakes and. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was. That's a good point. I didn't even know that actually definitely is a reference. The snake yeah. is not an accident. That's a good point. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Another reference, AC, which I, I'm I'm surprised you've been here five minutes and you haven't brought this up. Mobius, literal definition of the washed agenda, my brother. Literal definition. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, he's out here. He, he he he's out here. Shout out to Wash Dad Life. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a real thing. Just, just was. Wait, what happened? Re- there's something that happened recently. Oh, it was the thing about getting cold, feeling in the knees. Yeah. I saw you were tweeting. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. No. <laughs> no, you know what? The worst thing that happened to me today. I left. I left to go to work uh, without my knee braces. Oh my god, mm. that was so oh. bad. No, no, uh, no, no, no. That's going Patrick, too far. Patrick Ewing would have been disappointed. <laughs> 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 Maze, that's the best use of uh, the sound. Do you have any cartilage in your knees? No. 
Yeah. No. Hey, so you, you're like you and Jawan Blair, are the two people who at 20 didn't have any cartilage in your knees. Oh so. man, no yeah, ACLs, yeah, so, no yeah, cartilage. So Jawan Blair, man. Oh my gosh. Still flipping Hashim to beat over his back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. um. So, but, but AC, yeah. what about see, the scene with Loki and Sylvie? Is kind of where we were. This once we get okay. before we got on the Barry Switzer tangent. Um, what uh, what, how did you feel about it? You know, I compared it. I compared his confession to Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One when Benji admits that it's about his friends. I knew you'd like that. But how did you feel about that scene? Because I feel like that's pivotal, and I know that you were a fan. Oh, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was wonderful between them. I mean, it, it, it is funny how Sylvie is is kind of like cool with everything being what it is until shit goes left. But I, th- I found that part pretty funny. But I mean, just overall kind of seeing the emotion from the emotion from Loki there is like this dude has been always trying to prove himself to you know, not only other people, but in reality to himself. So kind of seeing that laid bare and where it, it leaves him now, like we've seen, we've kind of seen the iterations uh, throughout the the character's entire run, which, I mean, if we now think about it in the history of the MCU, I mean, this is, I mean, top five, maybe not five in terms of developed characters to this point uh just like thinking of the totality of everything that he's gone through and you know as i mentioned last week the the hero's journey and the idea that maybe this is who he was meant to be regardless of how his journey had went previously and i thought that was just a wonderful touch that like throughout as he meets with everybody and then of course you get to sylvie and you have that little back and forth very poignant stuff i yeah i really enjoyed that Yes, and so speaking of Sylvie, the scene we actually are basically on at this point is when she refuses to come, and he goes back to uh, AD's um, lab and explains that they're not going to go. But then we get the scene that I think is one of the best directed scenes I've seen in a minute from Marvel, and it really makes you wonder why they can't do stuff like this on their $200 million movies, um, where she's in the record store, and I just think that this is like a really well... like I think that it's actually kind of is thematic with sylvie even though we've talked about she is playing very one note this season the idea that like as this shit is hitting the fan and going that she's kind of unaware but of course it affects her like she can't help i think that there is a there is a metaphor to be read into it of sylvie thinks she can just put her headphones on and focus on the thing she wants to focus on but unfortunately even if you're even if you stay away from the beach, if the tidal wave is big enough, it'll wash you away. And so I thought that was a really cool scene where you see her and you see everything in the background. Um, Maze, how did you feel about that, you know, both aesthetically and, you know, thematically? Yeah, I mean, anytime you can get a literal Velvet Underground needle drop, I feel like you got to go yeah. for it. The way that it ended up syncing with the rotating camera, rotating with the record, and then it oh, essentially isolated it. I mean, yeah, it was, it was gorgeous to look at good use of the spaghetti effect i mean i think yeah it was a, it was just a very powerful visual flex that this show no, not necessarily has been lacking but it was yeah. nice to see them elevate at this yeah. point rod so it goes back to some i don't write a speech but it goes back to something that happened <laughs> with last time i was on here and I, we talked about it a little bit with uh, them watching timelines <clears throat> disappear on the screen. And I yeah. was like, yeah, one, we've seen this multi, like the, the, this universe is dying a lot. But it made, to me, it made sense thematically that they could be detached because it's, it's, it's happening on the screen. It's literally their job. Like it's, they don't have the emotional resonance, resonance that they're supposed to have. And then Sylvie, her actions have never really been like altruistic about mm-hmm. saving all these timelines. She's just been like, I want to be left alone so much that she's also equally fucked these people. She just didn't yeah. really, it didn't hit home until everything started fading away for her. And then it's like, uh, you do have to have a TVA. You do have to have something protecting all this. You can't just walk away and leave it like that. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then the, the way that they showed us how it happened, it just hit much harder now than it would have hit if they showed it in episode two. Because seeing literal, like, we didn't even know those damn people. But seeing, like, record player dude, like, record store employee yeah. seven die was like, damn, that's that fucked her up. And, like, I, I like that so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, d- uh, Dabin? 
Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good montage, man. Uh, you know, like uh, I, you know, Big One Tree Hill, Dawson's Creek fan, growing up, right? And and, and oh, so I, I'm, 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 you. I love that. That's I love right, that. man. Yeah. How that's how is right. the first reference for montage? Let me tell you, Dawson's let, Creek, let, One Tree let me, Hill. Let me let me explain. Let me explain. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Let him right. cook. Hold up. Let, 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 you know, so like so so in, in One Tree Hill, in the first episode, when when you know they're they're showing Lucas dribbling through through North Carolina, right, and and he runs into Peyton. There's an indie rock song playing, and it's just him dribbling. And he runs into Peyton, right, um, and like you start to kind of see the backstory about how he doesn't know his dad and all that. It sets it up really well. It sets up the whole story really well. So here it is. Like you're right, Marvel doesn't do this enough where they just kind of let the soundtrack cook around what's happening, right? Like, just let the music play. Like, well, that's one of the things they did really well in Black Panther, I thought. Like, just let the music cook around T'Challa kicking ass. Like, let's let that happen. And so Sylvie, Sylvie has gotten to the point, it's interesting, because Sylvie, and Rod, you said this, and Maze, you said this too, she didn't go back to her or to her world. She didn't use the temp pad at all to go back to where she was taken from. So how shitty was her life before she got taken anyway, right? So that it makes me think that. But here it is, the thing that moves her to action to say like, yeah, we're going to go save this shit is this record player guy dying, the guy who gave her music, the guy who, to your point about all the friends being kind to Loki, this was probably the one guy kind to her. And she's like, shit, he's dead. Now I need to go and, you know, and save it. I thought I thought it was so beautifully done, too. It's a beautiful shot. Just everything spaghettifying all around, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a big pasta fan. It worked, man. It worked really well. <laughs> yep. Dude, the Just way he was, like, reaching to her and then yeah, like, literally Sylvie. disappears. Yeah. And then that, that final shot is just going to stick with me forever of the camera following the spin of the record player yeah. as shit is spaghettifying. Yes radiating yes. out like damn the, the crab man it fact, felt like infinity war it felt like yes. infinity war. Like, what i was gonna say is yeah. the fact that we've been talking about this for five minutes and people didn't bring up the snap i think is the biggest challenge this scene had because yeah. you need to come up with a way to make people disappear that is not the same as what you previously did and obviously it's going to be reminiscent no matter what i think it's a fool's error to try to completely avoid it but it was a really interesting motif uh ac how did you feel that this was done and you know you're always thinking about incursions about this so, you know shit so what was your opinion well i mean we'll get to it a little later as far as that's concerned but like just this part of it here i think from a stake standpoint what we talked about last week was kind of seeing like we needed to see what came off of the the consequences of of last episode and and the temporal loom thing and you see it here shit just went all the way left where there will be nothing left and I think it's the perfect, it, you know, it gives the opportunity, obviously, for Sylvie to finally come to her senses, but also it sends Loki, it's a finally, uh, whether it be by intuition or sense, figure out, hey, this is what I need to do to get shit done and save everything. And I guess we can lead into that now because that part of the, the that part of the overall arc of not only this series, but what's to come in is what interested me the most about what we saw. I um I texted Dalvin yesterday after the episode because you know it was one of the, the theories that I had seen on Twitter was that the way that the time slipping and everything that Loki had been doing to this point kind of reminded folks of the uh, Molecule Man. Uh, a Marvel character. Uh, Dalbin, I would like to let you kind of explain a little bit what this character does and his connections, not only to the larger Marvel universe, but to somebody connected to Secret Wars, which is the Beyonder. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's interesting because when you texted me, I was getting ready to text you too because one of the things that, so Molecule Man plays this just incredibly vital role in Secret Wars, right? And And the Beyonder kind of, kills him repeatedly multiple molecule man he just goes through just uh, annihilating them to try to get his power because the molecule man is the only one that can do what the beyonder can't at that point right when it when it's happening and loki is kind of set up to do what we now right now at this particular moment know that kang any of the kangs cannot do right because loki figuring out time slipping he that means he can go in between timelines the other kangs haven't figured out how to do that yet and so there's 
the theory that, that, that the rumor that's doing the rounds is that the Kang from Ant-Man is going to become the Beyonder, right? That's what folks are, that's what folks are saying, that he ends up absorbing all this power. But Secret Wars doesn't work unless you have a Molecule Man. And right now that's Loki. Um, you know, and folks can't see like my name, I put it like the God of Stories, because that's a trajectory that Loki ends up in after Agent of Asgard in the comics, right? Like he becomes the God of Stories. And I don't think that, you know, and, and Jake, you said something that's interesting. Like, why can't Marvel be this consistent on all their other stuff, right? Because, like, this show very clearly has quality writing, has quality directing. It doesn't seem to suffer from the mistakes that a lot of the other stuff have. And so I, I bring that up because that leads me to believe that nothing here is a mistake. There is not a mis- It's not a mistake that Loki says, I'm going to rewrite the story, right? That's, I don't think that's a mistake. I think his role is being set up to become the god of stories, the molecule man in Secret Wars that because we now care about this Loki and because his hero journey has been earned, if Kang kills him, I think that lets you know, like, all right, well, that's somebody not to be trifled with. And let me make this point on top of that. Let's go back to the end of season one, the illusion of a choice. The illusion of the choice is that, hey, you take the job of the TVA, you run the TVA as you see fit, or you kill me and there's more of me that come along. Obviously, they went one way. Now they're forced to go the other way. Which is, as Miss Minute said, it's all in he who remains his plan, nonetheless. So, regardless of how this goes, and seemingly how it's going to go, is Loki is going to be the new, to a degree, he who remains. I feel like that's how this is, this is ending. And if that's the case, that is still on, on track with he who remains slash whatever Kang we see's ultimate plan. Which now twists into something that came about. I think uh, this was a, about a day ago, or I think it was this was yesterday that we the, the Variety article came out, and the first one of the first uh, salvos in that article was that Marvel is fucked with this Kang storyline after somebody who saw episode uh, the the finale episode said that they can't go forward with Jonathan Majors after this. How can they do that? And after reading the, the article, we could talk about a, a, a little later, but just to stick it straight to here, um, it makes me think, like, at least for now, they're going to, how they, at least I see them leaving it, is they will leave it as Loki is running the entire thing due to his power and abilities at this moment. And they're going to leave the Kang cloud up in the air for the time being until they decide whether to recast Jonathan Majors or do away with the entire thing together and bring in Dr. Doom. Now, I have my own thoughts on that, but I want to send that around the room. Uh... Uh, Rod, I'll, I'll start with you. What, what do you think about this entire thing playing out to this point now, considering what we heard yesterday? Um, so uh, uh, a couple things. First, before uh, I forgot to mention the other thing I liked about that Sylvie scene, um, mm. the urgency and the concern I had for that character because I thought she was going to get spaghetti fired. And then she pulls out the temp pad, and you're like, oh, just y'all made me forget she had the temp pad. That's good. That was real good. Y'all got me. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is um, I've I'm not even approaching this series on like they need to figure out what to do with Jonathan Majors, only because the time constraints around the writing production and putting it out and the and the strikes. It doesn't even make sense. Like, I'm sure they had discussions, which is in the article, but it, it wouldn't even yeah. make sense that this should end in a way where they figured it out already. Because um, the writers are, st- I mean, the, 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 the actors are, st- it's still a strike for the actors. They couldn't even, yeah. you can't even, you're not supposed to. Let me not say you can't even, but you're not supposed to be auditioning people right now. So, like, I don't know that it's going to, um, I don't know that I'm not even going to put that weight on episode six because I feel like it's unfair to the writers and the people that that made it. But that weight is on yeah. the MCU. Like it is still like it is a very real thing that is on the MCU and it's up to Feige or whoever to figure that out. And I hope they do so in a way that is like moral, ethical and like works for people, because one one major thing they've kind of been able to avoid, which is probably the most underrated part about the MCU is they've kind of avoided scandal. 
Like even the stuff we're talking about now, we're not talking about on the set stuff that happened like to people. We're talking about this guy needs to go. Not that there's never been any like rumors or speculation or even like just downright mm -hmm. people being like, hey, it wasn't the best environment to work here. But we're not saying like Jonathan Majors did things on set or something. So I can understand why this production shouldn't have to carry that, but the MCU should have to carry that. So I I just, I feel like it's yeah. two different questions is what yeah. I'm saying. So as a finale, I, I, I feel perfectly fine going into the finale and being like, I do want to see what, what was the plan with the Kang thing? Even if it doesn't work, like what was it? Right. Eventually it may not work out, but what, what, what was it in the narrative of these six episodes? And I think there's some awesome stuff they could do. But uh, that's the only thing I'll be looking forward to. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Jake, let me get your thoughts on it. What, what did yeah, you think I think that it's... I don't just think it's unfair to the writers, directors. I think it's actually unfair to the series, Loki. Because, yeah. like, what what go, is going on with Kang going forward? Like, I think that this is generally the place you and I just... AC have different priorities, and this I say that with no aspersions. It's of like, course. It's always secondary to me. And I think when the MCU is at its worst, it's when it puts the larger stuff primary and puts like, that's how you get the Thor having a vision scene in age of Ultron. Like, I think it's just actually just like, not it. If the writers of Loki were mo at equally concerned with how Kang is going forward and how the story ends, then it's going to be bad. Like that should be like a very back burner thing. And so I'm not worried about how it's going to affect it because I have faith that they're going to give a satisfying ending for Loki himself, the character and the characters that he cares about. And then, so like, then we can discuss how it works going forward. But like, yeah, I also, like, I also just don't like, are they fucked? I don't, that's just, that seems like a quote. That's just for a quote sake. Like I, I, they can, things are malleable. Like they, people can rewrite stuff. I, I just don't believe that they could, I don't think anything can happen next week. That makes them truly fucked. Let me just add hey, this. Uh, can I shout something real quick yeah. too, though? Yeah, sure. Did you think the putting Kang in Ant Man three kind of hurt Ant Man three, like making that so like it's a Kang story now, not a it's not the it's not it's no longer like the the small stakes comedy that we made the first two times. Now do I think it made the movie worse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do I do, do I know if it affected the box office? No. I don't. No, know. I don't I yeah, I'm, not, I, yeah, I'm well only talking. Purely like fan review, not not. But I don't. Let, let, me, box office stuff. let me flip it on you, Rod. Do you think them putting Ant Man in the Kang movie <laughs> is what <laughs> fucked it up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so yeah. Yes. Okay, y'all agree because yes. that's what I was afraid of was gonna happen with Loki season two when they first were like, yeah, we you know it's gonna be mm -hmm. Kang in the second. I'm like, all right, but how much Kang? Like <laughs> like let's not turn this to Ant Man to where like it's about showing he's the baddest motherfucker. Like I. I, I expect Kane to be in it, that. but just not too much, dog. <laughs> not too much. And, and that's before that. that's before yeah. all the shit came out. It was like, just don't, as, as Jake brought up, don't Thor me, dog. Don't give me the trailer to the new movie in this movie. Make a, make a competent six-episode series. Let me just add this uh, about Variety before I throw it to Maze and Dalbean. I... When I saw that paragraph, I, my my first thought was like, "Yo, there goes Variety again, spoiling some MCU some MCU shit unnecessarily." Like it, it's just really like really you had to do that now, especially like, like where to Rod's point and to Jake's point, I, I'm enjoying the series. Like I'm in, I'm enjoying it. I'm not thinking like, yeah, I think of grander stories as far as like the grand scheme of things and what to look forward to. But I want to get there on my own. I I didn't need this thrown right in the middle of it now nah, this is just like the the time where they spoiled the eternals a week before it came out say like, oh harry styles is in this and just put it in an article and everything was cool it's just like i think the thing is the people in the trades just genuinely don't think about movies and tv in the same way that fans do like i think that's no, just like a it's i think them. that is bad for Hollywood. because the other i'm telling you like it, no i know it's specifically know. them they have done this now like two or three yeah. times where it's just like yo come on but um uh maze Look, I, I, we we talked about it briefly yesterday. What what, what are you thinking? What what's your 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 thinking on what you read and and how that kind of does it change anything for you? Or do you have a, a a different kind of view on this? I mean, in terms of Loki, yeah, it's screaming cliffhanger to me. It's screaming we're getting a big cliffhanger, mm -hmm. and it's not just a cliffhanger for the Loki series; it's a cliffhanger for everything. Um. 
And then the variety, like the story, you know, they're piling on. It's what you do. When you see a fire, you throw yeah. some more shit in the fire and you just kind of <laughs> laugh. But the more telling thing to me is Disney straight up pulling Magazine Dreams, which is the Jonathan Majors movie that, you know, sight unseen, people were raving Oscar about. Was. Yeah, he Oscar was going to win the Oscar. He was, he was, I will say this, as someone who pays a lot of attention to the Oscars, he was, if he did not have his arrest, he was 100% going to be nominated right. for that movie. Zero, and, I would, I would have bet truly all the money in my bank account. In the branch timeline, you know, like it, the Oscars, in my opinion, are, have fallen off. Like they're not, mm-hmm. I don't ascribe they, them as much value as I did when good, I was a yes. kid. I think I, my dad has spent like most of his life memorizing Oscar shit. Yes. So I'm going to say that the, at one point they mattered. Can, but I actually anyways, say, can I give a quick rebuttal, which is just, yeah. we used to make movies that were both culturally yeah. relevant and good. The thing is, yeah. is now we don't make right. culturally relevant movies that are good. Anyway, I just, I just tapped Jake's vein of, of just rage. I could feel I'm it. so sorry. I'm so sorry. Cause it. I'm mostly just mad that we don't make $30 million movies. The that system's are broken, important. Jake. The the lube needs to be expanded. We need bigger rigs on the lube. Anyways, correct them. And the fact that it's Disney, the fact that they just pulled it, they didn't push it. They pulled it. They're like, we are, we cannot no. release this movie right now. Did they do that because they're hoping that it'll blow over and they can release it next year and then he'll win? Or did they just say, nah, we just don't want to deal with this shit at all, dog. Like we just don't want, we don't want to have to do publicity for it. We don't want to have to do anything. There, like, it has no release date right now. It essentially does not exist. Yeah. And that is a movie that, like Jake said, was almost a lock to win an Academy Award and get a lot of attention. That is a terrible sign. Mm-hmm. That is a horrible sign. Because it's, guess what? Disney owns the MCU. So that means that, you know, in no uncertain terms, they're pulling King. Like, he's not going to be King. Will that change? I guess that's possible. But man, that was like the variety article is one thing. This like magazine dream shit is yeah. a fucking death sentence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also think that there was the news. There was originally whispers, not whispers, like reported that the NYPD, the DA's office had looked into another medical incident with his girlfriend in London. And that basically was confirmed that it was another assault. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think that. The thing that I talked about in Discord, and I think is the thing that is really under discussed with stories like this, it's like beyond like, oh, should they get canceled for a thing they did offset? It's like if he put her in the hospital and got her got some police involvement and then did it again several months later, if you're Disney, how on earth can you say that he's not gonna do it again if you keep him as Kang? Like how? Wh- wh- like I just don't understand how. It's, yeah, I think now, that it's now you're in a Ja Morant Adam Silver situation. Yeah, and, uh, but like seriously, then, like I just you, also because... shout out to Rod and repping the Hornets right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we want to talk about a fucking dumpster shout fire. Well, I think I, I every think it's the team same needs thing. a shooter, Maze. Every team needs a shooter. Shout out to the Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> like, the reality is that some crimes have a higher rate of people doing them again, and this is one of them. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and so I think that if I just don't see a positive for them keeping him on in that if they're going, even if they're going to pivot away from Kang, assuming he's going to be at least in some, because they they never just pretend something didn't happen. So you have to be in future stuff. It's like, why on earth would you, why would you take a movie that is not even in pre-production yet and give it bad press? Like saying like every movie we release for the next five years is going to have bad press. Like, yeah. why would you do that? And also, I don't know if y'all remember the epic press run of Nate Parker, who oh uh, also yep. had Oscar buzz going and stuff. And then, of course, Definitely. every our, every interviewer f- was obligated to ask him about it. And when they started asking him about domestic violence and, and sexual assault, his, his answers were terrible. Not that there's ever going to be an answer to truly satisfy people, but it wasn't like, you know what, I'm, I shouldn't have done that and I was wrong. And I remember that. I've learned. It was like... Mm-hmm. It was it was basically like bitches be lying by the end, and it was like, well, yeah, you can't have that associated with Disney or Marvel or MCU on no, any level. No, it just the all and Johnny Major was trying to make wanted posters, right? He was making wanted posters, <laughs> right? So if you like, if Jonathan Major somehow mm. like, even if he somehow doesn't get a conclusive like guilty verdict, yeah. the stink of this is on him, and I don't, I don't know how you can move forward in good conscience with him as the character. 
even and we've had history of like recast nothing this major but like we've recasted things and in a in a different like narrative sense yeah i would say you yeah. low-key you low-key recast major characters already it just doesn't feel like that because they have different names but we have a different thor in the mcu you know for a movie we had a we've had a different iron man at this point basically we have a different black panther this is not unprecedented no one person is bigger than like the should be one bigger of, than the morality of the the people involved Unless uh, unless you're you're Anthony Mays in episode one of this uh, review series, hey man, <laughs> talent. Hey, Mays, I follow Mays, talent. Maze, my Venmo is uh, Jake Dash Christie. I will delete that from the record. If you can. <laughs> oh, wow. we're doing extortion, huh? Who knew that Jake wanted to get on the scam end of this episode? But I you want to sell me a fucking Mays. jet ski while you're at I, it. What do you want to do? Hey, I just got off. I just got at. You just got out of unemployment. I need to replenish the coffers somehow. <laughs> All right. Well, now now that we've now that we've set the table, is it is it time oh, for me to oh. fix the problems? Yes. Oh, wait. Dubby has. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Because because this is the, the variety stuff. I was like, all right. I, I told AC. I was like, I was like, there's some shit. Like, there's a lot of shit there. Okay. There's a lot of shit there. Um, and then we can get to to to, to fix the problem because I, I no. I, Mace, Mace, has, Mace has an interesting. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to, because I think also with Kang, like we've already seen that every variant doesn't look the same. This is the easiest recasting thing that you could ever make 100%. ever. It's the easiest yeah. thing, right? Um, the variety thing. So I I I think it's I think it's twofold. One, it's not lost on me that. You know, they spend a lot of time in that article shit talking a black woman director. That's not lost on me. Like it's very, it's very obvious, very pointed. You know what I'm saying? Nia DaCosta is the first black woman director for Marvel, and she did what Christopher Nolan was already doing Inception by the time the fucking Dark Knight was. At, <laughs> Joss Whedon as, was doing. It. I, I, I mean, as I pointed it. out yeah. during when they were doing the pod last night to preview it, I put yep. in the the comment section because I wasn't on that pod mm-hmm. that Steven Spielberg started producing directed and edited the post all when ready player one was in post-production See what I mean? the entire like, movie it's, yes yeah. it's a very common occurrence so the fact that it's being used to like bludgeon this black woman director is trash um so like i, I think there's there's that part i think it's it's marvel has benefited from the from the writers and actor strike in this sense now and i said this to ac or i think i might have said it on on twitter to, to ac as we we're talking the the thing that would have gotten them out of the majors deal would have been if there was no strike because you could have filmed something and recast but because their studio doesn't want to pay the actors and the and, and the writers they can't recast because they can't shoot anything to get them out of the way right like that's i mean it's, it's, it's some ironic you know twist there i think i think majors i think the pulling of magazine dreams is huge i think the fact that also and it said it in the variety piece creative artist agency dropped him because he was belligerent to their staff like so this wasn't just him putting his hands on which and not and I don't I don't say just like to dismiss it but right. this wasn't him being wasn't only an abuser yeah like right. you're right. talking about a dude who was going to set and just going off on people we've heard countless horror stories people coming forward saying like hey man he's kind of a fuck up like you know etc cetera, etc cetera. and so i think the fact that they pulled it the fact that caa dropped them and CAA, keep in mind caa Peyton manning right Peyton manning has a great relationship with caa Peyton Manning didn't get dropped after mooning a, 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 a Tennessee staffer way before he entered the mm. NFL. If anything, they gave him more money, right? Mm. So the fact that CAA dropped majors already, I think, is I think is huge because they're like, yo, we're not, no, it's not happening. And this is the easiest decision you have to make. It's the easiest mm. one. You, you, you can, there's so many talented uh, actors that would sign up to play Kang in this, in, in this going forward. And I will say, and the, 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 before we go to Maze's thing, I think that's how episode six ends. Because I'm with Rod. I don't need it to have a clean resolution because I don't think we're at that point yet. But I think that quote about like, oh, they're, they're fucked. They're fucked. I don't care about that one. I care about I see no way they can move forward with him. That lets me know that the last episode is set up to not go forward with him. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's what it's going to end up as. Whether it ends up as Loki being Wait. who he remains or whatever the case may be. I took it to mean the exact opposite. To yeah. be honest. I got, what I, I took it to mean. Well, hold on, Delbin, can you dig into that a little bit more for yeah. me? Like, what, what does that make you think? Because so the the quote was, oh, they're they're fucked with this Kang thing. 
And then, but then the same person said, I don't see how they move forward with him. And this is a person who's seen the last episode, right? So for me, when I read that, I was like, okay. I was like, so does that mean that you're saying that in the last episode, they're clearly moving on from him? Because you're because had you seen the an episode that prominently features Jonathan Majors, right? You could argue that they were setting themselves up, again, partially because they can't mm-hmm. move on from him right now because of the strikes. But you could argue that they were setting themselves up to, to see how this plays out, to let this run its course. He does go to trial at the end of this month, right? Like the, the, first, the first hearing in his trial. At the, so are you buying yourself time? The way that that person worked, I, I picked it up differently than what Jake did. I picked it up as like, okay, there's something that happens in this episode. Is it that Loki set up as he who remains? Is it Loki that's now the 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 master of the multiverse right and and in turn you're able to move on from the gang of it all or you know i could have misread it entirely but it just it feels like it feels like something happens in episode six that allows marvel to move on whatever that may be here's my personal opinion on it just to be quick they're not dropping the multiverse thing they're going to keep it going no. um yes the i think the Kang character stays i think they're just recast and they will just move on like they have done in the past and- I, cannot Chino, wait to see, yeah. I can't wait to see which of y'all are right this is, um, so yeah. what, 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 say, the way that I so read fun. that quote, but, uh, <laughs> the way <laughs> I read that quote is that what I thought that meant was that they're setting Kang up to be so omnipresent that mm-hmm. they can't keep Jonathan Majors on because he's going to be in everything, and so yeah. like that if Kang is such a big deal that they can't keep Jonathan Majors on because if he's going to be in every movie going forward, then he can't right. be the guy. Right. Or yeah. let me let me let me raise a little bit more. He gives such a crazy performance in Episode Six mm-hmm. that. That, that they he ties their hands you know it's like wow they, oh man he was so good he raised the bar for whoever has to be king next that so like so like if john fucked. morant like if john morant won the mvp last year like that kind of shit right like that's, Pretty that's much. What you're yeah yeah well, it was adam like silver, when... adam silver would just let him play at that point <laughs> adam <laughs> silver would buy him a gun he'd hand him a couple <laughs> adam silver would buy a gun and and bring it to the NBA suddenly party. the mb the nba would be the nra yes i, I agree 100 <laughs> percent it's I it's also, like when uh, Kevin Spacey got recast in All the Money in the World, and when Ridley Scott yes. was asked about it, what he said was like, "Was like, was Kevin Spacey good?" And he's like, "Yeah, he was great, but I wanted my movie to come out." <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Right. yes, that's it. Also, what, what, Rod, what did, what did you want to say, Rod? I was just gonna say, um, I also like the idea of like recasting them because you you for Marvel, you actually would get a little bit of a bump of like. Thank you for just doing the right thing. Yeah. Like, like I think yep. it's like, cause we always talk about penalizing people for doing the wrong shit, <laughs> but, but like there's, yep. you know, we don't get very many moments where it's just like, Oh good. That yeah, was the right is. thing to do. Is, does it change some things for some people? Is it, did, did, it's not like this never happened, but like, mm-hmm. you know, vacate that title. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, yes. like move away from that and let's just do the right thing. Cause like at the end of the day, man, the message of the Marvel universe, the message of comic mm-hmm. books, the message of the morality of what you're trying to put on display for the world is undercut by you being like, but this guy's too important. We have to, we yeah, have to bring him real. back. That wouldn't even yeah. make sense. Yeah, that's real. Well, and, and imagine, and, and, uh-huh. also, and to add to that, like imagine if, okay, you, you get this deal done, strike ends. And the first thing you do is recast this dude, right? Like mm-hmm. that's, that's a double whammy, a positive press that you just, you can't manufacture that. You know what right. I mean? Like, and I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean to make I'm it with you. cynical. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm like, I don't want to yeah. like, cause, cause that's not the thing I care about, but like, I just don't see how there's an incentive in not re- getting this dude out of the paint. What is the incentive of holding on to him? He's never going to have a performance so good that no one talks about this again. He, no one's going to do that. That is yeah, No one I mean, other we, than Val Kilmer and Tombstone has ever given a performance that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we have what is theoretically a performance that good in Magazine Dreams that they just said, right. you know what? Gone. Yes. Bingo. I guess there's less money tied to that, but still. Yeah. But yeah, yes, um, I mean, I mean, yeah, thinking about that overall, I'm, it seems like we have a big problem on our hands, but it seems like Anthony Mays has a solution. Woo, Birdman hand rub. Let's go, baby. So, <laughs> you know, we need somebody with supreme talent. We need someone with a diverse skill set. We need somebody with broad, strong shoulders that can carry the weight of not just Disney Plus series and the Kang Dynasty and Avengers movies and compensating for the fact that we don't have a hero set and you know, just really just give a diverse performance that can be multifaceted and idiosyncratic and really 
tremendously, and I'm going to modify this word because that's the only way to do it, tremendously unique. <laughs> and there's only one man for the job, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson is Kang. It'll save everything. <laughs> get the TikTokers up on there. Get the big dick energy in the MCU. We will save this project with <laughs> not just one Pete Davidson, but 50 Pete <laughs> Davidsons. <laughs> but 100 Pete Davidsons. He texted will me they like, all be yes, the same? Yes, mind, they bro. will. <laughs> Will there be any discernible difference in the performance of Kang and all the other shit? I am blanking on the other one's names. I knew that I knew them at one point. Iron Lad. Whatever the fuck. High Evolutionary. No, that's, that's from fucking Different. Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh Pete God. Davidson is the answer. You're welcome, America. You know, I've only you, done you, this you, show with Mace. Case. I've only done this show with Mace twice. And he's been so like <laughs> professional and smart and stuff. That I started to wonder, like, why does he be on this show? Like, is he not better than this show? Or is he, you know, there's a lot of silliness that happens on this show. And I think we just found out. He he, he belongs. He definitely belong on the show. The Pete Davidson verse. Right, wide open, Rod. In the multiverse, everything is different except Kang is always from Staten Island. <laughs> Kang lives with his mom. 100% of the time. <laughs> People are like, I know Kang just destroyed the universe, but the thing that's mostly confusing is how he keeps getting with all these beautiful women. Yes. <laughs> I know I know you think that, you know, Kang's stand-up isn't funny, but he's just really cool. Like right. you just want to hang out with him. Like he's like he's a he's a conqueror's conqueror. You know what and, I'm saying? And if, and if you watch Kang the early makes, stuff, I mean the early SNL stuff, oh, it's better. Oh, I mean, lights out. Kang, Kang, oh, Kang he, makes he, the ladies he, laugh. That's how listen, he gets them. Uh, Kang makes the ladies laugh. If he would have been an Ant Man, he definitely smashed uh, Wasp Mama for sure. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Michelle Pfeiffer definitely Michelle Pfeiffer smashed. right on the back of one of the back oh. one of those ant. Yes. And, oh. and he would say something like, you know, I had the Dangerous Minds poster on my wall when I yes. was Yes. That's right. That's right. He would have he would he would have sung some he would have rapped some Coolio to her for sure. Right. For when, sure. When the, when, the, when, the time, when the time like when that time thing breaks, he's just like, I don't know, you want to smash? And then cut, yep. cut forward. You yep. know what I mean? <laughs> he's he's jumped from Multi from multiverse to multiverse, from galaxy to galaxy, and every Stay galaxy he can't yeah. cure the butthole eyes. They follow him wherever he nope. goes. <laughs> he gets so, so, so when we were so amazed when we talked in episode one about potentially Kang being a stage five flinger, we now realize that it's been Pete Davidson slang and dick around the multiverse that has brought out all the stage five flingers. That's what we're saying. <laughs> I'm so just I just picture him showing up in the cane costume uh from Dick out. Man, shrugging. Dick out. shrugging, yeah, shrugging. doing the shrug like mm. <laughs> the end, cliffhanger. Stop it. Stop it. I, I haven't seen AC this apoplectic truly since the time black Panther. AC knew. Like this is I texted this, this is, to AC two days ago. And I Maze, said, Maze, put Maze, this, this in a bottle. Awful. I'm gonna drop this on Jake. On Friday. Maze, Maze, this is really in the upper echelon. Like, I really think it's this and when our friend Michael Springthor pitched Italian Black Panther are the two times I've seen AC most. What, you most. mean Donald Faison and Homie Spumoni is Black Panther? No, no, AC, AC, there's a video on our Twitter. It's a classic moment where he, our friend wrote a whole thing about G Gabagolanium. You know, it was really good. And his, name, his name was T'Challa Torre. <laughs> Yo, in all anyway. seriousness, all seriousness, though, I was inspired by the the I'm just Pete uh, thing he did on SNL, which is basically yeah. like the Ken song, for Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. great. And it, it, it's like it was so self aware. And it's like, man, he's he's got it. He could do it. I, 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 and I hate the, the sketch he did. I'm like his. Oh, no. I, I don't know if any of y'all saw this movie, and I and I know the movie wasn't good or whatever. But he was the best part of the Transformers thing they just did. Like, like the movie's not good, but Pete. Yeah. Pete was giving it to us. Put it on TV, baby. My he was Ray. fantastic. He was so good. Was fantastic. I was in the theater, yeah, I was in the theater like, I was in the theater with my arms folded, like, yeah, I don't know. And then Pete Davidson immediately acquits himself. I'm like, all right, yeah. He God damn it, it, Pete did it again. You know, that's how you felt. I get it. Kang did it again. <laughs> uh, he could Jake, do it. Um, 
Jake, yes. If you could do me a favor and uh, of course, just ask the next question. I got some heart palpitation. <laughs> okay, so I guess the next Wash question the is like we finally the, broke Wash the agenda here. The next question is, I think this is probably fair. I know I I've had my standard answer. AC says an answer. Yeah. Um, but we're recasting Kang. In all seriousness, I assume a, uh, Maze is not going to give me a serious answer, so I'll go to him last. Wow. Uh, Dubbin, who is the actor that comes wow. to mind first for recasting Kang? The first, the first one always has been John Boyega. Okay, mm. yeah, I think that that's another, a really good idea. Yeah, he's he's been the the one. I think that he he got a shitty deal from the Star Wars fucking incels. <laughs> so you I've think he's it. signing up for Disney again based on that? That's my rebuttal, unfortunately. Yeah. That's the rebuttal, right? The other guy though is Denzel's son. That's the other guy. Hell and, and, no! And that's Hell no, guy. dog. <laughs> That's the you other guy. Couldn't out act <laughs> Pete Davidson. Are you fucking kidding me? Couldn't out act Robert Pattinson either. But listen, man, we we got to take what we say. He's one of the generation. He's one of the right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, think yeah. that, I think that JDW's strength is actually almost the opposite of what you need for Kang. I think he's a good, really good actor. But I think he actually is best when he's kind of the everyman as opposed to silent. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah not I mean, talking. Yes. Not, I mean, not acting. You know what he that sounds like? No. That... <laughs> he he can do physical shit. Like, I'll mm-hmm. give him his credit. He's a good action star. Do not yeah. open your mouth, John David Washington. Yes. You know what that uh, sounds like? You, that sounds like when we're talking Tim Tebow as a quarterback. Like, he's good until he has to throw it. That's what that sounds yeah. like. Uh, I'm not, Rod, I'm not a John David Washington guy either. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I'm not a John David Washington guy either. Yeah. But uh, John Boyega is a great one. Um, I I really like the idea of the Ravona Rims, Renslayer being a, a Kang um, I won't be a variant person. that, you know, because it's just <laughs> built in already. Um, and then it, you know, checks that box, like, because I'm always trying to get, like, black women into, like, the bigger spots. You know what I mean? Like, how do, like, when Black Panther was, like, going to uh, Shuri, I was like, yes, that's perfect. Let's just go with that. No need to. Mm-hmm. No notes, you know what I mean? So if we can kind of move, mm-hmm. that's a great way to make a main character that. But um, yeah, I think those ideas are good. Um, and yeah, definitely not um, John David Washington for me, though. I, I, I've, I've yeah. given him 17 tries and it, it just ain't, it ain't hitting, dog, the way I needed to hit. Uh, Maze, sure. uh, do you have a serious suggestion? It knows a fine answer. I mean, Pete, it's Pete tough, Davidson was dude. a serious suggestion. That was yeah. a serious one. So, it's uh, fuck me, he made tough. The case. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to like rack. My, I mean, like obviously they can't get Chalamet, but I think right. he's probably he's like the go to answer for all this shit. If we're yeah. trying to keep it not a white dude, I like. I don't um, know, it's it's probably gonna be impossible because this movie's gonna. I think. I think this movie's gonna suck. But Yaya mm. Abdi uh, looks so great yeah. as a villain in that yes. aqua, like mm-hmm. i'm like oh, yeah. oh okay i didn't know you but had this he would if be they, great if they didn't already have him as something in the mcu already yeah. that may not yeah, that exactly. may not be getting made mr that's wonder true. man may not get may not be getting made though right that's true he, and and i'll tell you he, I, I i i'm one of the only, I'm one of the only people that does candy man I'm and it's a and it's an upgrade. It's an upgrade form. If you yeah. go, listen, bro, don't be Wonder Man. Be Kane. Yeah. It's like we yeah, I'll take that Kang. stay yes. increase. <laughs> yes, I heard y'all so, cutting yeah. budgets. I, I heard y'all real, cutting real, budgets real for quick. the smaller films anyway. <laughs> Let's go. Time we go. <laughs> real, real quick, Jake. My my biggest question was just like, do we have to keep the same type? Like, so can, can mine slightly older different. woman. So, okay, so I want to see Helen Mary as can. You Why not? I mean, she don't hate that. I actually don't hate that that much. Even though I obviously be taking a role for a black person, I don't no, want to. No, but, but, but it works, right? It Mer- works. Mer- 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 idea. You, you want to really bring it? Yeah, Give me like Meryl, this. dog. Give me Meryl. So, Meryl Street. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. So, Kang wears Prada. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Meryl Street would have definitely banged Michelle Pfeiffer in the quantum realm. Oh, I think Meryl Street probably banged Pete Davidson. Let's go. Come on. You didn't just read the headline? Her and her husband have been separated for five years. I mean, that's Pete Davidson has been fucking her for five years. I believe it. <laughs> so, okay. AC and I have had our go-to answers for the past, like, you know, year, and so I'll let you, AC, your go-to answer is Damson Idris. I think, um, mm. I think what we saw in Snowfall, Franklin Saint. Listen, yeah, he could do it. I, I think. Uh, he yeah. has the chops. I really do think yeah. if you give him this big opportunity, he oh, would nail yeah. that shit. I really yeah. do yeah. think he would nail it. I just yeah. want to so see. I want to see answer, him oh. disappear a multiverse and then do that body speech from the final, from the, like the final season. <laughs> of him, 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 body, body, <laughs> body, 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 like. 
I want to see. Casey. Are we doing bodies, bodies, bodies again? That's another Pete Davidson joint. I was Settle just about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, wait, Rachel said it as Kang. Um, so anyway, my answer has been he's older, uh, but I think he is one of the best actors alive who has never really mm-hmm. gotten like the big thing. Yep. Uh, it's Coleman Domingo. I think oh, that he has oh, like man. the most gravitas. Oh, one of the, cool. Some of the most gravitas of anyone alive. Yes. And he's just like, if you see him in anything, like, I saw him in Zola, a movie yeah, that not amazing. that many people saw. Oh. Un fucking yeah. believable. Yeah. Yeah. He's and amazing so, like, in everything. He yeah. has everything. So, everything. Well, yeah. he's like six foot two. He's, yeah. you know, also a black man. I mean, he's yep. a uh, openly gay man, which I think will yep. be a big deal. Like, I yeah. think that he just is. He plays he's a one of my villain. favorite working actors. He plays a villain in Fear the Walking Dead, and this is long after yep. Fear the Walking yeah, Dead yep. is like really like quote unquote good. I yeah. I didn't give a yeah. I was watching because he would be in an episode doing oh, Coleman yeah. Domingo yeah. stuff to people. And <laughs> you forget he also was in the Transformers movie. He played Unicron. So yes. if I mean yes. I also I just think that yeah. Also, Jake, uh with magazine dreams just getting the fuck up out of here, he's probably gonna win the Oscar now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if yeah. he's going to win. I think he's, there's going to be a yeah, He's going to be nominated for sure. He's going to get yeah. nominated. He's going to take that slot. I've heard, what I've heard from people who've seen it is that Rustin is not that good of a movie, but it can still get, like, a nomination because yeah. it's a good performance. So, I, so I've heard similar, but I, I, that second part is the key, that it's going yeah. to be nominated for well, sure. Because, I mean, with, 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 the, uh, with acting categories, if it's a lead performance, the movie doesn't have to be that good in order to get right. a nomination. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Austin um, Butler. But yeah. I mean, oh, the no. thing about Elvis is that so people, tons of people saw it. So, like, that's always the thing, too. Like, people forget. Elvis was a very um, successful. But, yeah, I, that's I my I do want to throw one, one kind of random one. Is anybody watching Lessons in Chemistry at all? The Brie Larson. Yeah, the, Rachel, the, 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 the Brie Larson. Heard of it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bill Pullman's son, Louis Pullman. He's, he's got I mean, some he's chops, old, man. He's a young, hey, young man. Him. But he, Bob. he can fucking act. So, like, yeah. that, I mean, that's that's a pretty left field one. I don't think they do that. It's probably way too low profile. But you know, that's I'll give you, I'll give you ahead. another, I'll give you another random person. And just because <laughs> Jake, as you were talking, I was like, who's an actor, a veteran actor who I really still think is criminally underrated, Giancarlo Esposito. But he's a guy yeah. that I'm like, man, you'd play a kick ass Professor Xavier. I kind of yeah. want to hold you for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, I want to give it he's Giancarlo. Also, Norman he's also Osborne been person. every bad or guy. Norman. Yes, he's been yeah. every bad guy. Yes. He's and the now bad he's guy every- in The Boys. He's the bad yeah. guy in The Mandalorian. So yeah, I think he's yeah, probably yeah. Uh, over Jeff- this Jeffrey point. Wright. I want him to play a villain. <laughs> Jeffrey Wright is Jeffrey another Wright? dude. I, oh, I think he could do it. Already the Watcher, though. You're oh, forgetting how many people are already in the MCU. But, he, but I mean, we don't see he's him, right? Easy fit. Like he's the he's a That's cartoon true. watcher, right? That's true. So, mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, Jeffrey Wright. Now, Jeffrey Wright is actually, by the way, who I put my money on winning the Oscar. By the way, just if anyone's winning. Yeah. For for yeah, what? For, oh, for that. Okay. Yeah, either him, him, either him or Killian. There's a chance that Oppenheimer goes like Titanic and just wins everything. I, honestly, I, I, but yes, a big, chance. A big chance. Big chance. Yeah. I feel like this is anyway. the, this is the first time I I can only remember that time that I was talking about Obi Wan being washed that you and you and Jerome started cooking me over the wash stuff. I think that was oh, the classic. one other, that was the one other time where I felt like I was gonna die on this podcast. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> did Pete uh, so y'all don't <laughs> think y'all don't think Pete Davidson's getting the Oscar for Transformers? No. <laughs> Stop it. Yo, Stop it. EGOT. He's gonna sweep it this year. This also, is the year of Pete. So not right. to, not to, this is it. This is it. The thing is, he also is, has an uncredited cameo. Actually, not uncredited. I think he's <sighs> credited in Guardians 3. And then I remember he's in, obviously, Transformers. And then he also is uncredited in Fast X. And so I remember yeah. there were blockbusters in three straight weeks that Pete Davidson yeah. has a tiny role in. And That's I'm like, right. not tiny, but like, just, man, he's everywhere. It counts. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great what? when he accepts, when he accepts Best what? Actor with Meryl Streep up there. That's gonna be <laughs> well, it's going to be really great when we realize that they're both playing Kang at the same time. That's gonna be the real, you know, I mean, you know what the thing is? <laughs> The, the variants. I mean, yeah, it could be anybody. It could be both. You could get a, a king. You could get a Meryl. There's a king. There's, there's a Martin made. Short thing. You never there's know. There's a king in all of us. Okay, wait. One, 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 short one more. The one king more inside idea. me. By Tobias yes. Funke. David Cross is king. <laughs> He's uh, pretty one, blue. One more. One more recasting idea. You just made me think of Terrence Howard. We finally get him back. Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back. He's he's coming out of retirement. <laughs> Let's go. Bring him back. Like, Taking over the multiverse. Trick. 
<laughs> him, him, him rapping whoop that trick as he's beating up Ant-Man. I'm all in. I'm right, all in. Listen, all listen, in. Ant-Man. <laughs> Yo, he's going to ask the fire, man. <laughs> Rod, 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 please, yeah. please tell me you have seen him pitching the, the like, science the, of hydrogen yes. to Uganda. It, yes, yes, yes. It's like for years we didn't know that the math two we said two plus two was four, but see it's two plus two is three, and I know because I went to the finest mathematics schools. Like, what are you talking about? So, so, so seeing seeing that seeing that you yeah. can't picture him explaining what a temp pad is. So no, he can do it. Science. He can no. do it. I will. This is the loom, baby. Who hasn't seen? Who hasn't seen Rod's like <laughs> tiny Don't Twitter make the video? Bigger, baby. <laughs> Of, of, K, as, of Terrence Howard as Hank Hill. It is something I return to like once a month and laugh at. You mind giving us a little? I got these. I got to get these propane accessories, man. <laughs> I got to move this propane, baby. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> I quit. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I think we can stop. Like, there's a lot of other stuff in that article, but I don't think we can get to it. Am I okay? I don't think we can get to it. I think it's it's totally fine. We can do that another time. Um, yeah. I just um okay. Very quickly. Very quickly. The finale is next week. I do really feel like a that we should bring this group back for next week. B. Um. You sure about that? Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I may not make it, but I'm pretty sure. I might as well go out laughing. Go out with a smile. <laughs> go um, out with a bang. <laughs> so finale, finale wise, I just want everybody around the room one thing that they want to see, regardless of whatever the hell Variety says. One thing that you'd like to see. Dalbina, I'll start with you first. Kang killing Loki. Oh, okay. So shut it down. Shut it down. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I see. I, I see you. I see you, uh, Maze. How about you? I mean, what I'd like to see is not a cliffhanger, but we're gonna see a cliffhanger. Sorry, guys. <laughs> a Pete Davidson, a cliffhanger. Of Pete Davidson. Just, just, just the corner of his butthole eye. That's all you get. <laughs> and Maze, when you say not, not a cliffhanger, not. <laughs> when you say not a cliffhanger, do you mean like a series finale or like season finale? No, type no. Of I, I just don't. I do, like. My, one of my favorite shows of all time is Lost. They perfected, perfected. Great episode, last two minutes. Of, Throw something fucking crazy at you to make, like, it, this is before streaming and shit. But, right. like, it's when you're watching it on DVD or when you're watching it on streaming, they're incredibly good at making you, like, need to hit the next episode. Yeah. I do not want to feel that way at the end of this okay. episode, uh, of episode okay. six. I feel Got you. you. And how about you? And how about how about you, Rod? Um, you know, oddly, man, uh, I really, really want to know what Ovi's ending is. Like, he, they mm. re- that character's yeah. really fucking intrigued me, and he feels so like integral to the TVA, and like, if he's he the, the you know he is just like stolen this season in in many scenes and, and ways. This last episode we're all talking about him and science fiction and being an great. author yeah. and all this stuff like yeah, he was great. I, I feel like you know they need to do right by him and give him some like measure of like either uh, a prominent like future like to look forward to or a prominent like role in this finale to be like oh his story came full circle because uh, I care about that and then like Sylvie I just what is the narrative poetry to what her ending is because she spent a lot of time in limbo. McDonald's. Yeah, like I don't want her going back to McDonald's at the end of episode six. I just don't. <laughs> Fucking McDonald's. Right. Barry the lesson, Switzer awaits, baby. Like, Barry the lesson, the lesson she learned was just just go back to McDonald's and go to uh games. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And 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 Jake, how about you, sir? Uh, my answer is going to be, and I'll just say because the thing I care most about, I am hoping that there's something that they can have happen with Sylvie that will redeem in part some of the narrative frustrations I've had with her. That, if, that obviously won't make it better because you can't do that, but like to make it make sense, I want there to be something more than what we're getting. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Honestly, to me, at this point, based off of everything that I've seen after after really seeing Loki come into his own, um. 
I want I would like to see his relationship with Sylvie to a degree resolved because it feels mm-hmm. like we are now at a point with where this is going for him that he's going to be on a much higher plane because of his abilities. It's just natural when you make somebody that powerful, he's on another level. So um, I would like to see where that goes between him and her. I mean, the two, I mean, she kissed him at the end of last season. Like, and we mm-hmm. haven't really mm-hmm. gotten through to any of that part of it uh, as well this season. So I would like to see some <clears throat> resolution to that degree. And that's kind of where I will stand for now. But um, but let me ask one quick question. It's just yeah, yes sure. or no to each of you. Will there be a Loki season three, Jake? Yes. Rod. I'm going to go with no. Dobbin? No. I mean, you got him dying, so I'd have to say that's a no. AC? Yes. Wow. I think, they, I think they like this show. I think that I think they like this show. I think the studios like this show. I think it is the one show that kind of has grabbed people. The the writers have a very strong sense of where they want to take the story. Um, <clears throat> in the sense that, you know, we the way that we've everything that we've seen so far. Um and it seems like this is something that can, can this hokey cast of characters feels like it can continue another season. But Obviously, next week we'll be, uh, you know, telling and and where that will land. But. I, I want also a from a very practical three. standpoint. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I would like a season three. I just keep thinking about how the people that have been involved in the MCU since the beginning are all kind of like get into mm-hmm. that. Like, I've done this a lot. I'm ready to tap out, and mm-hmm. I wonder if Hiddleston is, is the next. Like, listen, this isn't even the MCU. Not based I was off in. not but that. Oh, only thing I'll say about that is not based off of everything I see from him when he talks about the character and the how yeah. involved and incredibly yeah. he leaves notes for the writers. That's the difference. Like he is, it, yeah, he I is so integral. Hope, like, I hope you're right. Yeah. I, like I like I said, I want a season I, three. I hope you're right. I just I always get a little worried because like all these people kind of like have this moment yeah, sure. where they're like. And I'm out. And you're yeah. like, damn, you wasn't liking this? You're like, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, yeah, you got to see I, Endgame. It's great, blah, blah, blah. And this, the Endgame comes out, Scarlett Johansson's immediately like, yeah, I didn't really like it there for the last few years. You're like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. So I, think I think that they're like playing white oh. women. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Scar- and Scar- she Scar- wants to be Scar- Jane. wants to play black women. She, she wants, wants to, to be Kane. Can she be Kane? Yeah, yeah. Can she come back as Kane? She wants to be. She wants to be. She wants to be Serena Williams in the biopic. You know what I mean? Like that's that's kind of. She another. comes back at so Kang. She, think... They reveal <laughs> Kang's real name is like you know Monica Jackson. You know. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to rest until every character she plays is revealed to actually be another race. Yeah. But no, there, there are two practical things uh-huh. why I think they would bring it back because I think that like. While they're mostly trying to cut back on TV, they're going to based on the things that we've read. I mean, I don't think this this is not sustainable. I think the fact that Loki still gets probably some of the best numbers of, for TV. The fact yeah. that it's an existing show. So from a very, very, very practical standpoint, they don't need to build new sets. It makes it cheaper. Um, it, uses a lot, it uses visual effects, but not to the extent that something like Secret Vision does. And the fact that Tom Hiddleston, I think the thing, I, it's partially a joke, but I really think it's true. The fact that he kind of accepted that his age does not line up with the James Bond recasting means that he's like, okay, this is the character I am. Like, he seems honestly kind of content with like, yeah, this is my character. He's, like, he's him, I think him, and I want to say Scarlett Johansson for Black Widow are like the only two actors who have ever been a producer on their own projects, which is honestly really rare for Hollywood these days. And I think actually might be a problem for the MCU going forward. Like, most movies with movie stars these days, the lead actor or one of the lead actors is a producer. So I think the fact that he's so involved, I read the story in right. with Natalie Holt, who I think is honestly the MVP of the whole show. Has the best. I think Loki has the best music in Marvel with the oh, only yeah. possible exception oh, being yeah. Black Panther. She Shout out to the theremin in this episode. It was yeah. going hard. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Natalie Holt gave an interview where she talked about that she was an extra in the Chicago episode, like and where they had like an old timey band. Yeah, the World's Fair. And and Tom Hiddleston came up to her and gave her some of his notes about what he was thinking with the character and asked if it might help with her composing. Like, wow. he's, like, so into this that I don't think that that's going to be an issue with and, this and And Loki is his own insulated thing, meaning, like, there's yeah. a control that he would have over doing this series for how right, long he wants to do it, yeah. as opposed to being Loki in the next, you know, uh, right. Captain America 4 or whatever. 
Right. Well, and remember that's why that's why that's part of the reason why Evans started talking about leaving was because he didn't he wanted to go direct his own stuff. Like he was right. like, you know, I don't get the chance to do that. The point that and how's that working out, Christopher? Mistake, Chris. Put the tights <laughs> back on. It's time to come home, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, your textured and nuanced performance in Pain Hustlers, which I watched last weekend. <laughs> Love Emily that. Blunt, Emily Blunt was really good in it. That was the no, only she wasn't. Thing I can as say. someone only as someone from the say. state of Florida, no, she was not. I'm, I, okay. now that I okay. I'm mad at you. Okay. She, I would believe my, I would believe you playing a stripper down in the Florida more than Emily Blunt. <laughs> Emily Blunt just she no she she has a lot of range. She can play both a DEA agent yeah. and Sicario and yep. Mary Poppins, but yep. down on her luck, Florida stripper who gets involved in selling Wait pain medication. I Wait do not believe the Hold one on a second. The because only she's no Pete Davidson. Thank you. That's a good that's no. A he could do it. That's he no. could do it. No. He no. Could, no. Could no, way. no. Could no. The that's only valid. person who could play a who could play a stripper is you, Anthony Mays, because of you. <laughs> that one time on that episode of Cinephobe. What was that? What was that? That damn. Uh, what was that movie? Fucking Blank Man episode. Blank Man. There you <laughs> oh. go. <laughs> Dr- yeah, means I- drunken rambling tale about how he busted in his pants at an Atlanta strip club. Yes. Jesus. And that's a good way to end the show, guys. Yep. Um, Echo trailer. We'll talk about it at some point. And we'll- Fire! It was good. It was good. I liked it. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about it at some point, but this was fun. Uh, we got one episode <laughs> left of Loki. Uh, appreciate this wonderful panel that we assembled here tonight. And, and I... I have survived this this episode, and we'll see if I can survive next week. Um, my my guy Rod, where can we follow you? Where can we find your work, my friend? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter because I'm never calling it X. Uh, Roderman's Prime is my Twitter handle, and then uh, my podcast, The Black Guy Who Tips, I do with my wife is pop culture comedy stuff, and then uh, I've written for and written and performed in this podcast called Drape Toe Maniacs. D R A P E. Once you put that in, it'll come up. It'll fill the rest for you on podcast apps. But uh, it's like a comedy and uh, history podcast about Black history. Yes, and and I heard and I saw that you were you were mentioned by your name was mentioned by one Pharrell, Pharrell Williams. Shout out to Pharrell Williams. Boom, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got go to make, Jake, all right. I got to make a joke about him being a 400 year old vampire that, uh, <laughs> that that I didn't think was gonna make the script when he saw it, but he left it in. There you go. Salute, salute to you, Rod uh, Dalbeen. Where can we find yes. you? Follow you? Appreciate you for joining, man. Y- yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At da underscore Osario. Uh, j- again, I say that I said this the last time we came on. I'm a Jets fan, so you're gonna have to put up with me dragging the weirdo that is my franchise quarterback, who you know believes in modern medicine now. <laughs> to deal with that. Uh, but you can follow me at da underscore Osario. Also, you can find my Jets writing on Badlands. Turn on the Jets. Um, and super pumped to be on with you guys. And let's land this plane. Loki's been fantastic. I'm excited to be with you guys. Wonderful. And and Anthony Mays. How about you, sir? Yo, at Corn Puzzle on Twitter or Instagram, Cinephobe is the podcast. We have Assassins coming out next week. That's right, the Antonio Banderas fighting his fist and leaning back reaction gif that you've all seen. It's from a movie. It's called Assassins. Also, we've got the Double Impact Rewatching 10. So if you go to the Patreon, count the dings Patreon, that means you can watch Double Impact along with us on Monday. That's two van dams for the price of one i saved i saved judge dread for tomorrow so both parts so i will be listening tomorrow have a great 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 experience with that because man that was a hell of an episode no, I'll look at I thought Jake was about to drop in. I am the law. When he, I, I just said <laughs> I was doing, I was, I was doing, I was doing Armand Desante. Most people say you uh, did law, but I do the <laughs> law. law. Are y'all? Are you only doing Sylvester Stallone movies? Is that the theme? Uh, so, so our thing, Rod, is that we uh, we're on this thing called the Daisy Chain. So you have to pick someone from the current movie. To be in the next movie. Oh, so fire. in this particular case, we're going from Judge Dredd. I picked Stallone to go to Assassins. Uh, okay. We did do a Stallone month about a year and a half ago, though, where we did rip off That's four dope. or five Stallone movies. It's with your criteria. What's the number it has to be under? On Rotten Tomatoes, forty percent or lower. 
Yeah, it's Rotten. not that hard to do with Stallone. Tomatoes. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I mean, he's got like fifty more we could do, honestly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, mo- and most importantly, and most importantly, Liam Neeson did not lead us to blacklight. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, would, you, would you consider doing like would you consider i know you did a liam neeson month would you consider doing a liam neeson year no 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 that's going too far <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, thank you some wonderful stuff I love, it so much. I, love it. I love the soundboard making another appearance jay christie where can we find you sir you can find me on twitter at the jay christie um i have another podcast love it first psych where me and andre Barrera are talking about the show psych you know Yes, sir. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Canton underscore three. Follow the show at MC University Pod. There was a pod that came out today. We had our pal Shivani, Cecilia, and Shu preview the Marvels that's coming out next week. Oh my God, there's too much shit going on in nerd culture right now. Next week is this week and next Gen V, Invincible, uh, this show, Loki, the Marvels next week. Oh my Doom gosh. Doom Patrol yesterday, right? Doom oh, Patrol that's right. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I actually got to binge. I got to binge the list. It's, oh, it's if you too, watch anime, so, so they just drop. They just drop yeah. uh, Onimusha, uh, the Blue Eyed Samurai. Like, oh my god, it's what a time to be alive. What a time. Oh my gosh, good time to be a nerd. But yeah, yeah. Salute to salute to the ladies for assisting us on that uh, that podcast. Um. Uh, they did some great work there. Go check them out. Obviously, the Patreon, patreon.com slash mcuniversitypod, where you can get our bonus content, $3 in the Discord, $8 if you want to be a, uh Avengers-level member and have a chance to appear on a subscriber mailbag like our guy Montel. And if you want to be a Patreon, you can you can listen to me and Montel go back and forth over Sweet Potato Pie, amongst, uh, amongst other things. And yeah, appreciate everybody for listening and supporting. Five stars, you know the whole nine yards. For Anthony Mays, for Rod, for Dalbean and Jake, I'm Anthony Canton the third. This has been Marvel Cinematic University, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>